record. Literally, we were all playing games. I Matt! missed Saito's face. What? <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the plot chat. You guessed it, we're at the award show. We promised it 20 years ago, and now we are delivering big time with pizzazz, graphics, music, the whole shebang. Welcome to Plat Chat episode. <laughs> What episode is it? Yeah, you is just it read the 53? title. Uh, I don't know what the title. Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, the viewers can read the title. Oh, you guys can read the title. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Black Channel World Show, baby. Let's go. So here we have it. Who who is joining us today? In our group, we got episode fifty-three. Uncle Egg, <laughs> Matt, Mister Eggs, and Johnny. Boom! Wow. The boys are back in town. You All know, right, then, know, gentlemen. People <sighs> ask for this, but now they probably wish it they never did. <laughs> Before we get into it, I wanted to talk a little bit about a little story that happened to me over the weekend. Oh and my God. People are pretty accustomed happen? these days to my stories and whatnot that I've been coming out with. But this one's a special one because it actually mm. entails it's true. a battle. It is true. <laughs> it is. Oh, give me a second. To... You got to fix your glasses. It is true. And I'll tell you what happened here. It was a battle of life and death, the forces of good and evil going against each other in the mind palace of Nazoth, as 20 adventurers were, were going further forward into the mind of an old god being in the world of Warcraft. It's true. And as we were battering our heads repeatedly against the carapace of Nazoth, we were That's 93... True. Pulls in 93 pulls. I remember the exact amount, the exact number 93 oh. pulls in. It's gone well. We're getting them down to 1% pulls. It's on the horizon. We can see victory within our sights. Let me just put this He's 93 dead. pulls into perspective He's for dead. you, actually, as well. It takes 10 minutes per pull, roughly. I calculated it. It's 930 minutes, around 15 hours per person. What? Yes. Yeah, we put a lot of time we into put this. 15 hours per person into this. 20 people in the raid, 15 hours of our own time individually Why? to kill this one boss, Carapace of Nazoth. And we're getting there, and we're getting there, and we're getting there, and what do you know? Someone's internet dies. And these mythic oh. raids, you can't do them. You can't do them unless you have 20 people. I mean, you can try and do it with 19. Much more difficult. You need all 20 people. One and person we so, can they be- They were so close. One person can be the difference. You remember, Matt, you were there. Who was it? I disconnected. Was there. Who was, was it? Just Patrick. Connected? Patrick, yeah. And tell me, Matt, did Patrick ever return? He wasn't able to. He wasn't able to. Do you know why? Why? Because he didn't have T-Mobile, baby. He didn't have America's best and fastest 5G network. And let me tell you a little bit more, huh? With 5G coverage in all 50 states, T-Mobile has America's largest 5G network that covers more people in more places than anyone else. So even better, no other 5G signal goes further and farther to bring you closer to the Overwatch League and keep you connected to the game. So rank up and take your wireless game to the next level with T-Mobile and visit T-Mobile.com today. And don't be like Patrick. Get a T-Mobile subscription, <laughs> tether it to the phone so we can god down. And I'll tell you what, even worse, we ended up killing Carapace without him. He missed oh, out. Yeah, wow. He doesn't he have the have achievement. There's an ant on my hand. Be gone, Ant. <laughs> but Patrick subscribed to me today. Patrick subscribed to me. He's a good guy. Yeah, you've just called him out live in front of thousands of people. You should have had well, T-Mobile. We know he's a good guy. Is it his, Patrick's a, a lovely had, guy. He should have had T-Mobile. Yeah. But I'm just... Listen, he made a mistake. Yeah, you, he did. People have got to own up to that. The mistake? We, not having T-Mobile. We True. like you, Josh. You should have hair, though. <laughs> it doesn't mean we don't like you. <laughs> I don't think uh, hair is comparable to T-Mobile. You true. can live T-Mobile without hair. T-Mobile is more important than hair. Yeah. All right, let yeah. me I would rather you... have T-Mobile than my hair. Let me give you guys the rundown. We can make that happen, Matt. We can make that uh, happen. Look, uh, let me, go, hey, let me hey, give you guys the rundown eggs. of how this is going to work, this award show, okay? Because there's going to be yeah. a bit of confusion. Here's how it's going to work. We have multiple topics. And I'll go through all of them one at a time. But we've got Coach of the Year, Most Improved Player. It doesn't matter. We've got countless amounts of awards <laughs> to hand out here. And the way it works is... Every single member of Plat Chat, me, yep. Johnny, 
Josh, Matt, we all submitted three nominations in an order of one, two, three. So we submitted our three players that we thought were best suited for this award or best yep. plays or whatever. The moment that we thought or the award that we thought was, was justified. First place, if you put it in first, it got three points. Second place, it got two. Third place, it got one. We then added up the points across all of them to get our three nominees in no particular order. So every award- We took this episode serious. Dude, yeah. every award, I'm gonna be calling out the three nominees. It does not mean that we only had the choice of these three nominees. It means these were the ones that made it above everyone else despite the voting process. So there you and go. let me say, if you're a Timmy and you just heard this, this explanation of the rules, and you go into the YouTube comments <laughs> and you say, well, why didn't they vote for this guy? Why wasn't he a nominee? You're not listening hard enough. Yeah. Turn your ears up, little Timmies. Yeah. Listen also, to the rules. My favorite thing is, I've had a few takes here and there. My favorite, my favorite part is when I tweet out a take and they act like I've forgotten about someone. It's like, yeah. oh, but you forgot about this player. You, you should have included this guy. And it's like, do you think I forgot about that player? Don't you already think I included him in my take? Like, I, I didn't frequently forget do about forget them. about people. <laughs> uh, well, oh, okay. Well, you know, that's yeah. where they get their behavior from. Okay, well, I, I see how it is. Now I, I know think what the source is. As well, Bren, you should note that it's only me and Kurt, our producer, because I added up the points and mm -hmm. gave them to Kurt. Mm -hmm. It's only us that know the, the winners true. for each of these. So yeah. Matt, Bren, and Reinforcer are reacting live to the winners of these. Yep. And there are some, yeah. I think, that you will find to be wildly different than what you individually had voted for, just because of the way that the points <laughs> added up. <laughs> what, Bren specifically, or me too? Or... I voted for a lot of everybody, wacky shit. Yeah. Everybody had at least one vote that no one else had gone for whatsoever. Yeah. In every category? Not in every category, no. There I were some categories, say, uh... but there are some very notable absences from these mm -hmm. awards, and I think that in itself is also really it's interesting. It's sad that uh, nobody else could take up the responsibilities of adding the numbers together than Josh. We were scared <laughs> that Bren potentially could have gotten it wrong. I so. got an uh, A in mathematics, in GCSE oh. mathematics. Which That's degree? Good. GCSE. Not yeah. a degree. No, in, uh, no degrees. In A-levels, I got like uh, E, You have a I bachelor's think. in math? A-levels. A bachelor's, no. A levels is like the one up from. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm not going to go over the education process of the UK, uh, the UK system. To be honest with you, it's Johnny. high school, right? Let's what? That's high. It's school, when you're right? 18. Yeah, it's well, primary yeah, you're, like, school. It's, anyway, <laughs> whatever, dude. Listen, our first award of the Plat Chat 2020 Award Show is going to be the Coach of the Year. Hmm. Thank you, Kurt. Oh, that was clean. Oh. Coach Whoa. of the Year. And our nominees are as follows. Nominees. Coach Moon for Shanghai Dragons. Packing 10 for Team Valiant. Oh. And Coach Rush the Paris Eternal are our nominees. And the winner is... Drumroll, please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that instead of whacking something? That's <laughs> one. Because yeah, I didn't want to whack my new desk, so I just started to make drum noises. The winner of the Coach of the Year 2020 award from Plat Chat, presented by T-Mobile, is Coach Rush for the Paris Eternal. Oh, <laughs> look at that! He just pops up. Hey, Wonderful. There he is. And now, he's joining us tonight. <laughs> he's alive in studio. Alive. Man. I am quite surprised at a couple of these results, but also really? not quite as surprised. Coach Rush, I think, was one of my major uh, nominations. But one person that I nominated that didn't end up making it through was Krusty. I'm surprised that Krusty yeah. didn't squeak uh -huh. by. Was that close, Josh? You were the one who was keeping track? It was... Um... It, it was fairly close, but not particularly. So there were there were three that really rose above the rest of the pack, and Krusty yeah. was an obvious fourth place. Uh, I think multiple mm -hmm. people had him in their third place spots, um, but he, he didn't receive enough votes compared to the others to be able to make it through. Interesting. Um, I mean, yeah. all, all three of mine made it through. I, I had a, I had Moon packing ten and Rush. I had that order. Well, let's yeah. yeah. Uh, Johnny, you, you I, I think, anything to add? I think it comes down a lot to like definition as well, or like not definition, but like what you perceive as value. Because obviously you can give it to all of these guys, like Moon, Krusty, uh, Rush, obviously like fantastic coaches of their very high skilled teams. 
But then you look at someone like Packing 10, what he achieved as a coach, I think was vastly different from yeah. Russian Krusty. Like he provided value in the coaching role from a completely different perspective to where I think like going into the season, the way we underrated the LA Valiant, I mean, you can, you can, you know, consider that like failure to recognize player skill, but also I think that packing 10, including the scouting and yeah. coaching the players from there, he added a ton of value. It's not necessarily maybe the same value as someone like Krusty brings to the San Francisco Shock, whatever, you know, when it comes to like the very detailed like strategy and execution with substitution and whatnot. But I think uh, packing 10 definitely deserves a lot of recognition for what he was able to provide in a very inexperienced roster and actually qualifying for oh. the... Uh, no, did he qualify for the playoffs? Or did he do play I mean, Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, no, everyone were, qualified for the playoffs. Yeah, they were... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were the fourth but yeah, seed, they got right? fairly deep. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, I, 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 I think packing 10 in that regard contributed a lot of value. Uh, so that was very impressive. Yeah, I yep. mean, that's kind of how I voted with uh, packing 10 and Rush is I... It's like which two coaches got the most out of their team this year. Like I, I think in a season where you had what well, like three teams that really looked like dominant at times, or like three teams that were like overly consistent throughout the year, there wasn't one outside of like Shanghai. I think you can make the argument that was like that dominant the entire season. Yeah. Uh, to where I looked at which coach got the most out of the team uh, that we didn't expect or kind of did like one of the better jobs. Uh, I thought Rush did a great job in terms of like rotating all those players in and out, right? Just finding like niches for them and like when to play the tanks, when to play, you know, Exy, Nico, Sparkle, soon, like really good rotation on that. Uh, and then I think packing 10, like you mentioned, Johnny, nobody expected anything out of the Valiant this year. Uh, I mean, we're have that so team down perform. on that. Dude. Yeah, we I mean, to have so that team down perform that. that way, it was huge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the the reason that I voted for Krusty in that third place position instead of Moon is that I know the value that Krusty brings to the San Francisco Shock, and I don't really... And this is because I'm not saying that they don't bring value, but it's a lack of maybe like transparency or communication from the team to the public. I don't really know exactly what Moon and the other coaching staff on Shanghai do. And I don't really know exactly what KDG does as well for yeah. Philadelphia Fusion, who's another coach that potentially could be in this kind of conversation, but none of us voted for him, I believe. But and I think the reason there is that I just don't exactly know what they do versus what the players do. Like the, these these teams are almost super teams, Shanghai and Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. So it's possible yeah, I mean, that they could be very player driven and still see that kind of success. It's hard to tell really where the value is from the coaches unless that you're told by the players what the value is. I agree. I mean, yeah. that's in part our responsibility to actually find out before we vote. Uh, no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm no, not, no. I'm not perfect in that regard either. No. Um, but I, I mean, I looked at like a team at Philadelphia and, you know, they didn't end up winning. Um, I think one of those tournaments as well. And like, yes, they had a very impressive record in that regard. Um, but ultimately, I think it was very stacked in terms of coaches uh, that were performed really well this year. Yeah. And I think that in the top three, I don't personally think KDG made it. Yeah. Even though I'm a bit of a stan. KDG think, stan from uh, Soul Days as well. Who, who had Russian first? Or did Me. he just win over like points? Oh, you did. Yeah, I think I did. Did I, just... I think I, oh, yeah, I also had Rush in first place. Um, I, okay. My justification is what you've already been saying. I think out of all the coaches in the league that got the most out of some relatively un inflexible players and some players with very low expectations, it would have to be Paris over Valiant for me. And I mean, that's, uh, I, I just think that they got the most out of a team. They managed to make a, a, a kind of dual nationality team work as well or, uh, in terms of the language barrier. Uh, and got over that but there were players like ben best and soon soon i had written off a little bit as well i kind of just figured him to be a bit of an all aim uh no brain player but he had yeah. multiple times where he did pop off and he could play the sombra quite effectively and things like this over the course of the season players like ben best that elevated their play so that's imagine, why i imagine gave it to the Rush. imagine the burrito maker saying all all aim no brain that is the burrito maker you scared <laughs> <laughs> you literally described yourself yeah you're scared i'm uh, not even sure he has the aim but until he steps up on the stage and then he suddenly half, the half power aim of the half brain yeah mm -hmm. sure yeah i don't oh. i'd also like to point out at this point as well yeah. though that when we say things like rush has done so well with um 
with Paris and Packing 10 has done so well with the Valiant. There's also other people that are working alongside them, like 9K yeah. as well, 9K, who's yeah. the GM, who yeah. is a huge part of how this team was built. And for example, Rush, as far as I'm aware, still doesn't speak very good English. At least at the beginning of the year, he didn't speak as far as I'm aware, any English. So what he said had to pass through translators and pass through 9K, who's bilingual in that sense as well. So I, I think, you know, responsibility is always split between multiple members of the coaching staff uh, here. We're just kind of picking the figurehead, the head coach, the person that at the end of the day, the buck stops with. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like an organizational award, right? Like they had everything in place yeah, to get the yeah. most out of the players. It's just the head coach that kind of brings it all together. Dude, Absolutely. Wonderful. Right, yeah. I mean, is, our host, on, huh? is our host ready to go to the next award or does he have a burrito? Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of I, I kinda wanted to say on the on Krusty part as well. I think a lot of people are surprised that Krusty maybe didn't win this because we usually talk about him as, you know, one of the best coaches in esports, etc. You know, that has been like the narrative for the past year or so. Um I personally didn't put Krusty at number one because I think the shock has been and oh my god. I know they hate this narrative and it's so annoying because I feel like I can't speak my mind without people just rioting. Um but, like, they had some concerns about, like, their player substitution throughout the year. I think that they didn't adapt with the Genji in the Summer Showdown. But I can certainly see if you look at the perspective, like, hey, we thought that the best chance we had was actually just put Striker on Tracer instead and not opt into the Genji like Philly and Paris did. I can certainly see that perspective being true in perhaps you didn't weren't as confident in, in your own Genji players. But then you also had the fact that, like, when they won um, the uh, Countdown Cup as well, Rascal came into the finals and he said afterwards that he didn't have any practice on the hero whatsoever, which kind of felt a bit YOLO in my mind and, you know, felt a bit like maybe they were lacking a bit of preparation. So it's, it's been a bit iffy. And when you have so many fantastic coaches in the league, I feel like it's so competitive that you almost have to be perfect. And I feel like the shock a few times this season has made me ask a few questions about what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, about I team. think one of the biggest reasons that Krusty doesn't win it this year is that we know what we, when you look at what he was able to do with San Francisco last year and how utterly prepared they looked for all of their situations, so and how much development, development yeah. they made and how dominant they are. And then the fact that he's taken them to so many finals, like your expectations of Krusty are so high. And I would still say that, yeah. you know, Alpha Pound, uh, from what he's done over the course of his entire career, he's got to be considered the best coach of all time in Overwatch. It, I oh, mean, yeah, for sure. Overwatch Absolutely. Uh, it's just that this year, there were arguments that other people got more out of less. I yes. had, he, um, he's still the coach you'd pick to start a team with. Like, if oh, you were, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, Krusty sure. still would be it. Yeah. I'm I had, talking um, down on him. I had Krusty as my number two pick, I think, oh. uh, in, uh, in terms of my coaches. And Very reasonable, I, I think. Because I put a lot more emphasis in the uh you go on and on and on about his expectations this year and how he didn't reach them but i would say that this was the hardest year out of any to coach a team in because of the hero pools and yeah, the exactly. covid situation like you're managing yeah. your players without actually being there in person a lot of the time it's this is a uh, it was a very difficult um just circumstances all around for a lot of the coaches to get the max out of their players and yet still despite all that the shock never once looked they never once looked like they were uh, an average team. They were always a top team, always a top contender, year long. Yeah, I mean, they have a fantastic team in all aspects. Of I mean, both their like, marketability, but also individual skill of players yeah. and coaching staff on top of it. Like, I mean, right, that, that, that franchise is just unbelievable. Let's move it on. Let's, uh, let's go to the next, uh, the next segment here, which is going to be the... Uh, oh, let me just pull, uh, pull it up on the phone. <laughs> the most... Improved Player Award of 2020. Uh, the slip, please, sir. Oh, mm. so clean. Uh -uh. Most Improved Player Award. The nominees for this year's Most Improved Player Award of 2020. Ah, uh, <laughs> as follows. Fearless, Ben Best, and BQB. So this Ooh. is in no particular order. An interesting selection of nominees. And the winner of the Most Improved Player of 2020 for the Plat Chat Awards show is... Is this... Okay, it, it started to... Someone was starting to type Roshan and crossed it out. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. No, come uh, on. It's, it's fearless. It's fearless. Right, Maybe in an excellent. alternate universe, it could have been Roshan. 
He was also a main tank player in season one for Shanghai. It could have been yeah. Roshan in an alternate universe. But in this case, Fearless wins our most improved player award of 2020. Well deserved, obviously. This is a guy that came in uh, yeah. off the back of the Norton 40 Shanghai Dragon season, went back to contenders, grinded his way back up, went back into the league on the very team that dropped him after their abysmal start and went on as, you know, you can argue that he's not a rookie because he played in the, in the season previously, but... My God, what a performance from Fearless. The, w one of the foundations of the Shanghai Dragons and a reason for their dominance in the APAC region. Me, personally, I had him at number two um, as, as, really? as most improved. I had Ben Best at number one because I think everybody's expectations of Ben Best were very small, whereas Fearless was coming off the back of some success in contenders. But you cannot deny that Fearless is a worthy, worthy recipient of the Most Improved Player Award. Was this one hard for anybody else to think of? Not it's like, really. I, I, I mean, wondered if Fearless was even like eligible because he didn't play an owl last year, right? He only played an owl in season one and then played on Team CC, right? Is that oh, correct? I mean, I yeah, definitely so thought he was. I eligible. put him at number one because I'm like, yeah. yeah, if he qualifies, he's number one. Did everybody have him at number one? <laughs> no, it was. Oh, no. Uh, so Matt and Reinforce had Fearless at number one. Oh, okay. Me and Bren did not, but we both included him on our list at some point. So by aggregate, he ended up winning this. Uh, uh, did award. anyone have Smurf on their list? No, and no, also actually. I thought you were smoking some crack putting Dude, smurf up there. I so. thought, okay, so his Arisa was good last year, but do you remember when they would put him in on ball and they would just throw all the time? I thought he was like mediocre I, and just like an Arisa player last year because that's mm. kind of what he looked like at times. I'm still not convinced, honestly, that his ball is like elite tier. I don't think we've seen enough of that here. But his win has been like crazy. The, the... It has been incredibly good, yeah. But if you remember last season, they weren't really playing that much Winston. And when no. they did, it was Super that was playing it in the uh, in, yeah. in Goats, at least from what I can remember. And Super looked Maybe really I good, was so. just super tilted and remembered by all the games that the Shock lost to last year where they would hit Smurf in. What do you guys think I about quite... the argument that Oh, sorry, go on. What you say? <laughs> what was your point, Hello? actually? Was it, was I, it particularly, I was saying, then you just was it particularly important? Because I've got a really good point, but it's talking about BQB. Okay, well, ah. before we move on to BQB, what, for Matt and Reinforce, the people that did vote Fearless at number one, the reason that I didn't, and I had him, I think, at number three on my list, is that I'm not convinced that Fearless really improved individually a huge amount. I think that when I used to watch him back on Element Mystic, he was a very good player. Like every time he's played in contenders, he's looked really promising. I think he was just in a terrible team in the He just wasn't on the own 40 drive. Yeah. Well, no, I had I somebody was. like Ben Best, who was who looked individually to be kind of a one trick and fairly poor last season. I feel like that was like a genuine individual improvement. So how do you how do you justify the the pick of Fearless here as most improved yeah. overall? I think for w what I look at is kind of like how it is treated in like traditional sports where you just look at the last time they were in the league. Mm. And I think it's kind of hard to argue that like when the last time he was in the league, like he didn't even look like a player like should be in the league. Uh, and then he went from that. And I thought like it was just a massive jump from where he looked like he was to where he is now. Yeah. Uh, but I think you do make a strong argument though that like, uh, you could have put uh, you could have put Jesus as the main thing of that Shanghai Dragons team, and he would have <laughs> yeah. bad. I mean, I, I mean, the Jesus of a team... actually played like Tracer in Contenders, so <laughs> oh, that was yeah, Wait, that was a good a, one. Contenders There's season a player zero, called Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were, we were <laughs> yeah. Denver or something for, for the Renegades? Detroit Five Hour Renegades. Oh yeah, Johnny was in Denver. Let's, uh, let's talk Wait, about what? BQB. Yeah, no, I want to ask me a question about Fearless. No, Did yeah. So, I mean, obviously, team culture affects a player's performance a ton. So, obviously, Fearless being in that 0 40 Shanghai Dragons team is obviously going to make him look a lot worse than he probably was. At the same time, though, when I think back to Fearless in Season 1, he was very aggressive and he seemed pretty one dimensional, specifically on his Winston, I'd like to believe, to where it doesn't, didn't look like he was this all around great, fantastic Winston player in my mind. And I do think that individually, he has improved. I, can, I think so, anyway. And I think that when you just, like, comparison to his 2018 to his 2020 days, I mean, so many players have improved, right? Because even going back two years, Overwatch was way different. But I really really do think that he has improved um, individually in that regard. And he's also a bit, like, versatile and stuff. And maybe that has to do with, like, coaching or other aspects. I, I just think that compared to Ben Best and BQB, I feel like I 
can come up with arguments. So for like Ben Best, for example, I mean, of course, he looks great specifically when he's playing the Reinhardt, contributes a bit to the team. But the, we still have that like no smite situation on the Paris Eternal where they swap between main tanks depending on what heroes they want to play. And that worries me to a point where like, yeah, Ben Best, maybe he's this fantastic Reinhardt, but like how can he flex besides that hero? Where I, I think mean, the Orisa fearless... has also been incredibly yeah. good this year as well, right? Like I when just you think talk Fearless about made a bit more oh, improvement that. overall as a player I didn't... than Ben yeah. Best. I forgot to put a third pick. What? But yeah, you did. There, but there was I, some for Matt where he just left out the third pick, so I was like, I'm no, not going to no, press no, him any further. Only, I think his brain might have been I, It's the only one I didn't have a third pick. I, really? I'm going to give a shout out. Yeah, I'm going to give a shout out for somebody who I'm going to pick third, and I'm picking him now, which doesn't impact the the vote whatsoever. Okay, but who did you uh, think was third? And he probably will never see this. Uh, I thought Godsby had a bit of a, a bounce back season uh, from season one. Uh, Hangzhou, he was he wasn't like that good. But this year he's all right. But but yes, last year when he was playing the Zarya, and then when he was playing the hit scan at the end, I think he looked really good. Really? I yeah, and they right. finished in like fourth place. This year he, he looked he great look like... on the hit scan and stuff at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. I mean, that whole team seemed like it tapered off a little bit. But then, uh, but the, as but, well, but but then Adora was uh, he was missing an action. Yes. Uh, well, how uh, also, Josh, how how can you not think about Ben Best and think about someone who's improved because of his team? Like his team is leaps and bounds better than Paris but, Eternal last season, even when they were playing Goats. I mean, yes, they definitely are, but the difference is not so extreme. So, so for example, I mean, season one Shanghai Dragons, the individual players... It, in terms of like pound for pound strength, it's just simply one of the worst, if not the worst, we've ever seen in the Overwatch. Oh, the worst. Shang <laughs> yeah. Shanghai Dragons pound for pound this year is arguably one of the best we've ever seen. Like the difference is literally just opposite ends of the spectrum. Whereas for Paris, you know, they had a very middling, like consistently disappointing and mediocre team. I think they went three and four every single stage last year, something like that. <laughs> literally consistently just disappointing. And then this year, yeah, they've improved their pieces, but a lot of their pieces have been at a similar kind of level. Like, okay, mm. Hanbin's coming Hanbin, in. Hanbin, Fielder, XC. Right, but for the, begin for the first third of the season, maybe even first half of the season, before Fielder and Sparkle were even playing, they were playing with, like, Soon, Nico, Ben Best, uh, Gray. Um, hip. Or, no, well, Hip, really, hip. not Gray. Yeah. Uh, and FD got like a rookie. So I, I think that, I mean, one of the reasons that we vote for Russia as being like an incredible coach is because this team wasn't guaranteed to be successful based on the players that they had. So I, I don't think that, uh, I think Ben Best was part of the players that improved rather than being just a product of a better team environment. Yeah. Who the heck voted for BQB? I did. Mm. Yeah, and I, think I did I as did. well. Absolutely. I think that going back last year, he was part of a Florida Mayhem organization that was super disappointing. We tried to hype up BQB essentially all year. And at some point, we just, I think we considered him a pretty like below average damage player. Like we didn't put any respect on his really? name. Really? Then he came into the, this he year. He looked like a little bit of like, us. And then he came in this year. And like when he started booming people like Baby Bay and Widowmaker duels and just pooing on people, I was like, holy shit. Like BQB yeah. has I, improved I, massively. I, honestly, thought, I can't remember. I can't remember ever seeing a good game from BQB. I always remember being disappointed because he came into the league as a Sombra specialist and like a guy that could also play McCree. And every time he was fielded, there was like this kind of hype from contenders where he was one of the better players. His and Sombra what I can right. remember is he frequently flopped in their matches. Really? And that's what, that was tail my memory of, of it. It's so long ago that I might be wrong, but I, that yeah. was tail, my memory of it. I remember tail end of 2019, BQB reached uh, new heights. Towards the end of the it, season, was that with the Florida Mayhem. playing in like the ice pick composition where he was, um, where they were playing the, the, pick. the. I'm not a Arisa. historian. The Gargoyle Roadhog, legendary. The, the Gargoyle Roadhog, and where they're playing yeah. the May and the Widowmaker, like that kind of stuff towards yes. the end of 2019. Yeah. I thought, see, in my head, I've and probably forgotten all of the uh, good Widowmaker play from BQB because I just assumed that was Sire player. Right, you know, because like when I when I look back in my brain and kind of cycle through, I'm not really paying attention to the Florida Mayhem because they were out of the league anyway, and I'm just like, oh, good way to make a performance. That was probably Sire yeah, playing. Yeah, BCB I think has always been quite up there. My pick for the third was an interesting one, and you you guys can 
can dig on me all you want for this one, but I went with Soon for my third pick for similar reasons to Ben Best's improvement, less so though, because I always felt like Soon was quite overrated in... Huh? In, See, I don't uh, agree with that. In 2019, I thought Soon was incredibly overrated by a oh, lot of... Oh, in 2019 specifically? Yes. I think he was pretty In 2018, bad. obviously, yeah. the competition was a lot lower. There was, uh, the, the game hadn't really been figured out to such a, an efficient, meticulous level, I would argue. Also, Soon was not on Zarya. That's yeah, got to be the biggest... Yeah, he was playing on Tracer, Zarya, right? Yeah. Playing Tracer and, and, and the Widowmaker and whatnot. But last year, he did not have too great of a performance. And I think that, uh, as well... When I would watch him play, he would make decisions and I would be questioning it as a platinum player. And that's always concerning <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, but this year, I think he definitely, definitely elevated a lot of his game sense. And I think a big part of that is because he's, his team structure that he's surrounded in is better. But soon was my vote for, most, for, for one of the most improved players. He was third for me. Um, and I think I've made a justified case for it. So I might overrule the yeah. BQB vote. Mm. No, you will. That's, how it works. <laughs> that's not how this works whatsoever. Yeah, this isn't the Bren. Not. This is the one award that you don't get to just solely dominate. Yeah, this is not I, Bren's Player of the Year. That's coming later. It's always win, winning. Uh, always nice winning oh. stuff, right? This so. is another award. Bren's got his hands in the air and his mouth full of food. Did he? You score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the next award of the 2020 award show. The Rookie of the Year Award Ooh. here, presented by Plat Chat, presented, presented by T-Mobile. Rookie of the so Year for 2020. Yeah. Our nominees are Lip, Lee J. Gon, and Alarm. Ooh. As our three Can some, like, nominees. Can I get some yeah, crowd we... noise courage? It's like, what? <laughs> 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 Drum we'll rolls. I thought a bunch of you guys were going to leave Lee J. Gon off. Okay. Well, these are the nominees, okay? Oh, well, I mean, he's still nominated. I mean, that's, I mean yes. he can't be removed at this point. And the winner of the Rookie of the Year Plat Chat Award Show goes to Alarm. Ooh! Ooh. Wow! 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 Hey, whoa, there he is! There he is! Yeah! That's my award! I think... <laughs> What do you think about this? We were stacked this year with rookies. We were absolutely <laughs> stacked this year. <laughs> very, very difficult to try and uh, try and pick. Uh, for me personally, uh, I picked Alarm as my second uh, Rookie of the Year candidate, um, huh. uh, which was quite interesting. But Alarm, I think, by, first? by far and large, was... First. <laughs> should, we, should we just do the whole thing again? <laughs> so we can just cut it out the middle? I mean, I can just cut it. It's fine. It's no big deal. Okay. Just keep going. Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> Alarm, who, uh, who wins our Rookie of I'll the just Year. Mute the, the, I'll just mute the forget, vibe. Don't forget, don't forget just to cut the audio version. Some people are going to read lips, though. Uh, uh, I'll, yeah. figure, I'll figure it out. We'll, it'll just be a weird okay, jump cut. It'll be fine. It'll be a massive jump cut. <laughs> All right. don't, don't forget to cut the audio version, too. <laughs> just start again. Just start again. Oh you want my me to God. go again? I don't know. No, no, we'll, no, just, no we'll just, just go. Leave it, so just leave it. Alarm is our winner. Okay. Alarm is the yeah. winner. Yeah. I had him as my number two pick. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, Brent, two of us had him as a number one pick, and two of us had him why, why is Johnny had him as a number two pick. What's so funny about him being the number two pick, I don't Johnny? Know. It's hilarious. It, yeah. it, you know, it's... it's it, yeah, go don't on, worry Josh, about the ones. jump cut Fantastic. fans. Go on, Josh. Go on, yeah, yeah. Go on Josh. Uh, so two people had him as a number one pick yeah. out of the four of us. Yeah. And two people had him as the number two pick as well. <clears throat> but for the people that had him number two, neither of them had the same number one. So, oh. you know, oh. it was like a collection who, who of... Who had Alarm uh, at number two alongside me? I had him at number two. I had Sparkle. Sparkle? What? what? No. Sparkle is God, he's, he's played like a third of the league. Were, you, were you one of those yeah, guys who voted oh. for Sparkle as Roll Star 2? No, I wasn't one of those people. Okay. I think I Sparkle... Even, so you thought he was looking at the Star? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, what the hell is going on I voted for, for Rollstar 2, maybe. I don't know. Hold on, but... <laughs> why... Why... Can you justify Sparkle at all? Yeah, because he had a huge impact on the Paris Eternal. He did, like, yeah. Like, do, do, is the award just because they pe played most of the season, or who had the most impact? Like... Sparkle had a huge impact for the Paris Eternal, and you saw when they couldn't get the most out of him, they just pooped the bed. 
Uh, so I, I went with Sparkle. But, I thought yeah, he was a boss. Arguably, it's about consistent. Yeah, it's about the consistency over the course of the year. So for me, for my number one pick, I had Lip mm. as my that's number fair. one. And it, yeah, this is a, people are going to look at that and think that's a little bit weird for the rookie of the year. But I feel like Lip went into, arguably at the start of the year, maybe not so the, uh, now, but in APAC, it was definitely, I think, a more competitive region when it comes to hit scan play. And maybe that is still the case as well, actually. Um, and I thought that Lip was outshining a lot of his veteran opponents. People like Happy yeah. uh, were coming up short against Lip, this rookie candidate. And he was a big, big part of the of why Shanghai Dragon had tons and tons of success. That was my justification for his number one pick, not because he was really good at Genji like Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Sparkle is really but, but, fucking good at Genji. He's Sparkle, really fucking good. I, I, I feel like Sparkle is a bit of a ridiculous pick because he hasn't played a lot of the year. But at the same time, you can't really point to another rookie and say that they won their team a title. Yeah. You know, like like they actively were the reason that their team won a title, you know? So I feel like there is some argument for Sparkle. I, I don't think, I mean, I didn't vote for him. I'm just. Why didn't you vote for him? That. Because there's so many other people that performed at a high level throughout so the entirety of the year. So many uh, candidates. Skill and participate. I, uh, you know, I like, uh, I like just, just for showing up. I'm just going to talk uh, over Matt here because he's just talking nonsense about Sparkle again. Just showing up. I, I like talking Lip. about showing up. Are you drunk? <laughs> just showing up. <laughs> You're just repeating the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you special. give the award just because, uh, yeah, like, let's give Brennan an award because he shows up to work every day. Do you, do you uh, think yeah, Alarm just showed up every day? Do you think he didn't have an enormous impact on that team? He had to play against Boston like 20 times. Of course, he just showed up. <laughs> 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 I had Alarm second. I like Lip as a Rookie of the Year candidate because he, when he came into the league, he was like a true rookie. I don't mean that he yeah. was plucked straight out of ladder, but the best he had played, as far as I'm aware, was Contenders Trials in Korea. So like he hadn't been even on a Contenders team, never mind a top Contenders team. Whereas someone like Alarm um, and a lot of these other candidates, they you already know that they're going to be sick. Like Sparkle, yeah. Alarm, like you already know these guys are going to be elite because they've played at the top level of Contenders. It's it's comparable to top level Owl at times. Yeah, you Whereas people like these. Lip and Ans as well, someone that didn't mm. get voted for by many of us, um, is uh, just like they truly did come out of very little experience and were still able to perform at an absolutely elite did, level. Did anyone have Ans? Yes. No, but I think that he actually absolutely oh, gets uh, forgotten about so many times when we discuss rookies. Because I talks about, you know, Alarm, Lip, Krong even, and I'm like, dude, like, do you forget about Ans? He was arguably the best hit scam player. Brian knew America. that Krong was a rookie and didn't even have Krong in his top <laughs> three. was a good choice, I think. But I went with Ans, um, because Ans was really uh, actually quite an integral part of, uh, of the San Francisco Shock. And he came in with... Uh, an air of mystery around him as being like this Widowmaker yeah. hit scan one trick yeah. and just flexed onto a bunch of different roles and still played yeah. at a really high level. The Sombra, yeah. yeah. How crazy is that? Like we saw him play Ridiculous. McCree at a super high level. He he bent yep. Striker at various times through the season on McCree. He played Tracer for some of them. Yeah. He played uh, Sombra as well. I, it's, it's, I mean, the it's Widowmaker weird. alone. The Widowmaker alone yeah. is just absurd. Like you look at his stats, mm. like he, he is legitimately carrying San Francisco Shock at times. And it's not because San Francisco Shock like, are bad around him. It's because he is first to get the kills, so he gets all the stats. It's like because yeah. he's the first one to get the pickoffs, no one else has the opportunity to get them. So he just buffers himself statistically. Yeah. It's yeah. nuts. <laughs> it's really nuts. I think uh, Ans is incredible. Didn't make my top three, though. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's because there's just yeah. so many incredible talents. And someone yeah. that we haven't talked about at all, but is actually second place in terms of our nominees, is Lee Jae Gon. And yep. he, gets, he gets forgotten about because when you think about supports, Alarm just has, in my opinion, a better case than Lee Jae Gon does. But Lee Jae Gon was so impactful. He had times at the beginning of the season, I think, especially on his break, like early on in the season, the first few weeks, where I felt like he was getting caught out a lot. His Batiste was getting caught out a lot as well. But from about the one third of the way through the season, he was making plays that no one else dared to do yeah. because he knows his team's going to back him up and he knows he has the skill to be able to pull it out. It's like, it's like FD got level Lucio plays, but on every hero, like his break, <laughs> he's doing like these mechanical jumps up to the high ground and whip shotting people in crazy scenarios. Mm -hmm. And like Batiste getting so much value out sick. of it as well. He's wildly good. Yeah. He also developed play. over time, right? 
Because going into mm. the season, I think that at times Lee Zigon was actually over aggressive and actually fed a sure. few times uh, yeah. starting off. Mm -hmm. But he's developed over time throughout the season and is now consistently one of the best supports in the league. So, uh, but I voted for Alarm. We haven't even talked about Alarm so far. Um, I mean, I, mean I voted for Alarm as first. And I mean, you can talk about like, we knew we had the mechanics going into it, okay? Like everyone knew it was going to great, just like Josh said. Unlike some of these other guys, you know, that we didn't know enough about, and they surprised us in a very positive way, like Ans, etc. Alarm, we know he was going to be great, specifically mechanically. But the way, like, how smart of a player this guy is, yeah. that was what really surprised me. And his versatility as well. Like, when he played Brig for the Philadelphia Fusion, and we were like, why the hell are Fusion playing Alarm on Brig? Like, what are they thinking? Yeah. What is the coaching staff doing here? It just turns out that they think that Brig is the most impactful support role in in that current meta. I think it was like main melee or yeah. something. Yeah, and it no, was it was actually Summer Showdown, break. wasn't it? Okay, maybe it was. Yes, yeah. it was. It was. It was Summer Showdown the because he was to shut down, down Genji's, etc. Yeah. yeah. And the, the Fusion coaching staff were like, "Yeah, we think Brig is the most important role, and Alarm is our best Brig." Like that's unheard of. Like how many flex supports? can just jump into Brig and be one of the best Briggs in the league. Like, that versatility. The best Brig, so, in my opinion, as well. Yeah. Sure. Like, instantly, as soon as he started playing it, he was the best Brig eater, and he was getting way more value out of the kit than anyone else. Yeah, unheard uh, of. So this guy obviously got my number I, one. Way. I mean, he's, uh, he's a clear-cut, like, MVP candidate, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to have Alarm, like, it, it, you know as like rookie of the year pretty much or like up there because you view him as an mvp candidate like uh yeah. one of the stronger mvp candidates in my opinion but yeah for sure i mean he's almost in there by default as rookie of the year because he's done so much work yeah. that he's already up there for mvp i mean the guy plays i i think in my opinion he plays every single support role Outside of like Lucio, which is obviously never going to be his job, but every support role that he's played has been at a top three level. And some of them have been number one, like his Brigitte. So that's, that's absurd. Even the <clears throat> best players that we've had haven't had that depth. Uh, sometimes it hasn't been required of them. Like when Jonak won uh, Rookie of the Year and MVP. I, actually, I don't think we even had Rookie of the Year in 2018. Yeah, I don't think so. it was just... It was just the first year. So yeah. when he won MVP, though, he wasn't really required to have as much depth. He played the Anna and the Zen, essentially. Yeah. Um, mostly the Zen. But this year, he, I think Alarm had to play five heroes. Anna, Zen, Bap, Brig. Am I forgetting one? No, maybe it was only four heroes then. But he played all of them at a top three level, and that's just unprecedented. One thing I will say is, the reason I did not have him as my number one pick because at the start of the year, he was not living up to the hype that was uh, surrounding him. I met to a player like Lip. If you remember all the way back to the start of 2020, there were so yeah. many expectations placed on Alarm because of the, the NA contender's hype. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh -huh. I like your glasses. Yeah. Um, compared to Lip, who has been, I think, more consistent over the course of the year. Now, Alarm, you, obviously, you can make an argument that in terms of his impact on all of the support heroes, Probably puts him at number one. I'm not upset at him winning our award here. Um, <laughs> but I'm just making a case of why I voted for him at number two. Sure. No. Oh. Is that the same uh, reason you did, Matt? Uh, no, I voted him number two for a different reason. But we can talk about it later. <laughs> we can even talk about it later. Because I, I, I felt a certain way with, like, a, a different award. Okay. Okay, I I literally have no idea what you're even alluding to. We'll there, talk so. about it. Yeah, you had my right, list. Well, you can see. Hopefully, what I when we move on to I the next award, list. I have your list. I have no idea what your thought process was. I mean, oh. digging into that brain is just okay. I, well, hopefully, we'll mystery. decipher it as we get further into the award. So let's move on to the next one, which is our clutch player of the year award. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be real. I I didn't know how, how to who to pick here. This, this was, was who we I, think would kill lots of people when you no, no, need no, no, no. them to. There was there, I mean this could be whatever you want to interpret it as, right? Clutch True. is in like winning team fights for your team, you know. You could give it to Decay for literally salvaging the Washington Justice's season. True. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you could do. But our nominees are uh -uh, in no particular order. Letter. Carpe and Decay. Now, 
interesting oh. set of nominees because two of these I did not even vote for. So I imagine the scoring <laughs> system was a little bit weird here. Wait, what? It was very strange. I, I will yeah. tell you outright, Clutch Player of the Year, it felt like people were... Um, not very aligned with their Wait, with their choices because who, I think who? people had very different expectations and also the amount of times someone really truly clutches yeah. is much less than they do every other thing because yeah. who, it's who rare in itself. Of these, who voted for all three of these? All three of these. What? What were they? I did. I did not. I did not. I had Carpe Fleta in decay. I think okay. I voted for two out of three of these. I voted for. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Hold on, announce the award winner first. All right, let, okay, so the winner this, yeah. of the nominees for the most clutch player of the year award goes to Flatter. Mm. His outstanding wow. performance in the 2020 season for the Shanghai Dragons and his multiple clutch plays. When I think of Fletter, I think back to the moment when he switched over to Widowmaker on King's Row, yep. and we all had to watch it a hundred times in a frag movie um, competition. Here it is. But here it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. this was yeah. absolutely nuts. I mean, the definition of clutch, when they were on the verge of not losing the series, but if they had pushed this in, this they, they, they could have lost this entire series and, and yeah. stopped this reverse uh, sweep from even happening. But Fletter pulled it out there. Uh, who did you vote for now? Now, now that we've gotten this you out of know? the way... Who the who the hell did you vote for? Yeah, with that stupid <laughs> smile. My number one for? pick was Flatter. Okay. My number two pick was EQO. <laughs> oh. See, I I thought that was like an interesting pick. Yeah. But but I'd love to hear your reasoning because EQO yeah. played so little this season mm -hmm. on the just on the Genji and the Echo essentially. Like was it just uh, for that one moment. Through. Like what, what I, was it for? I think it was for the individual moment and the stakes at the time to pull something like that off. Despite the sure. fact that this team didn't go on to win, I still think it was worthy of recognition, right? That it, yeah. not many players in that moment could make so many micro decisions, so many, so many correct plays one after the other in a split second, so naturally. See, that was... Uh, I left him off this, but he was one of my nominees for Play of the Year with that. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Oh, well, we haven't even got to that yet, so thanks for spoiling, Matt. Well, I mean... It's quite, uh, it's quite interesting, though, that you've given EQO a nomination based on <laughs> uh, quality play. over quantity, right? Yes. Like, you thought yeah. that play yeah. was so insane, but he didn't do many of them throughout the season, whereas I think most people would try to think in their heads, who was clutched the most often? Isn't that the same uh, well, argument that's... you made against Sparkle? Hold on, you were hold like, on. Oh, I didn't play a lot? Now, now you literally picked yeah. the guy off of one My, play? But this is for clutch plays, right? This is for the clutch plays, but... No, this is for clutch no, players. Clutch player. Players, right, exactly. Like the but, whole but, year. But, 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 wait, is it? Clutch yes. player of the year, yeah. Not clutch play, clutch play. Er. Now my my third, you guys are gonna be like, Just what completely. the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I, I get this one. I went with Smurf. <laughs> what? <laughs> For How what do you reason? determine that Smurf is the clutch player of the year? This is number three for me. What yeah, but you, how did you determine it? Like, what do you think my justification was for it? I don't know. I literally don't you, know. I can't what come did up you with think your justification <laughs> was for it? I thought that uh, of the times that the San Francisco Shock were looking like they should have lost a team fight, more often than not, the player that turned it around for them was Smurfs Winston uh, as a clutch decisive factor and one that really? we didn't think about a lot and that we often just kind of skip over because of how uh, many what good players MVP that the Shock Moth? have. Your MVP Moth. Moth? Uh, Moth was was gonna be the third one um, because he. Uh, <laughs> because if you would have, if you would have had a Moth this third in your club, for the one here, boop on yeah, King's for the one boop on King's Row when he got like three people, yeah, oh, I was gonna Lord. do Moth, but it then I decided instead to think about it. Season game? That wasn't even a playoff game. I decided. I, decided. I don't even remember when it, it was, happened. Was, was, that I feel on the San Francisco shock would have been reasonable is Violet. The amount of times that that guy like takes matters into his own hands and gets kills. I feel like he's pretty close. I don't think like, I was justified with Smurf. Moments, but crazy, huh? Uh, you so, don't think yeah. I was justified with Smurf? I don't <laughs> think that's justified particularly. Really? I, <clears throat> I, <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe it is. A smile off of his face when he says really. <laughs> Just like, wait, what? I don't think <laughs> that, I, I mean, I maybe just haven't noticed Smurf doing this. Yeah. I think Smurf's impact normally comes via his like positioning and the way that he sets up at the beginning of fights, more so than the way he clutches them out at the end. Like I, 
I can't really think of many occasions where I've thought, oh shit, Smurf like yeah. went above and beyond there with his Tesla cannon at the end primal of the rage. fight. Like it's, it's it was always, like, it's it's always way more rages. to me. Violet on like Batiste and Zen, like always picking up like doubles yeah. and like even Twilight for what he did on Honor, you know, not not as often, but it's only clutch. Yeah, I mean, uh, see, I voted, I voted for a different San Francisco Shock player. <laughs> That's wild. You go for? I, vo I voted. I voted second place. Okay, second place, not okay. first, because I had a different first place. We haven't talked about either. <laughs> second <laughs> place, I voted for a Rascal <laughs> because he got something on Genji. He got something on Genji, and he won oh my the San Francisco God. Shock Bro, the, the wow. Countdown Cup. Without you, Rascal, uh, they wouldn't have won the Countdown Cup. It, and I very think interesting. If anyone in the comments of these videos says I have Pepega, Pepega takes, listen to the, these two. Hold uh, on. It's How is that They won a title uh, uh, because of him. He, without that him, they would have been able to. Whoa. That is literally your reasoning for Sparkle, but for Clutch Player. No, no, like, no. Rascal, no, Rascal won them the Countdown Cup, and Sparkle won Paris the Summer Showdown. And, uh, this is literally yeah. your exact same uh, no, no, argument. No. Back arguably, no. arguably, Matt's is worse because the Rookie of the Year holds a lot more weight. Yeah. What? No, th this is the you can't get away with an opinion our, because of the this weight is of the award. award. This is our award. I'm weighing the award up. <laughs> All right, I'm weighing it up. The, one thing that's interesting for, to me, looking at these nominees, is that Carpe has made the list. Now Carpe yeah, is a player. I voted Carpe first. Yeah, I don't Carpe think first. Carpe was in, in big games this season. I mean, maybe towards the end you could argue, but he wasn't even fielded that much for. Like, the only game that was a big game where I think Carpe had a big impact was the final regular season game against the San Francisco Shock. In all of mm -hmm. the other tournament games that they played and all of the other... and the playoff games that they played as well, it was almost everybody else on the Fusion pulling the weight. At least well, that's, okay. that's my so, yeah, that's how let, I let me Let me d d d explain why then. So, okay, I think this in general was a pretty lofty award. It's hard to come up with very concrete evidence Agreed, for yeah. any of these players. So it sort of comes down to, you know, subjectiveness, memorable moments, and, you know, maybe some consistency <laughs> in some cases. But I voted for Carpe primarily because of that stat that was shown uh, throughout the season, where statistically he is by far the most impactful player in overtime moments. Uh, specifically, I think it is when uh, Philadelphia Fusion are like one man down or something like that. Yeah, when they're Carpe not advantaged. Is the only... Yeah, when they're not advantaged. Yeah. So essentially, when it matters most, Carp becomes in clutch. Now, I understand how, you know, that's not the most luxurious argument, or not luxurious, but not like the most fancy argument ever. It's not, you know, as, as fun as perhaps voting for someone who's had a big pop-off moment like EQO, etc. Like Smurf. But I do think... Us labeling Carpe, like giving him the title of like, oh, this is the guy, this is the most clutch player in the league. Like we even came up with a stat because he's so incredibly clutch. Like I yeah. think that stats evidence-based holds so much weight in comparison uh, I, to some of these players. I, I think, think Carpe is well, inclined to do both. I things. think I personally, the, it, that might be one of the stats in the Overwatch League that I hate the most to <laughs> personally. And the reason behind it is that the overtime situations are not the most important. I mean, they just literally no. aren't. Like, there are other fights that sway the pace of the game much more than whether you get kills in an overtime And fight. you would label them as clutch. I don't think it's possible to create a stat. I would hate to be the guy yeah. that has to create a stat. And I think the stats team at Owl did a great job of coming up with their best interpretation of what they could. But I don't... I, I think the... What is... The important fights in Overwatch are not possible to perceive by numbers yes. because they in the, because yeah. they're not just single fights they influence fights later on and whether or not it's in a big match is more important for like your clutch factor than whether it's in like a regular season game or something against against boston or whatever so like winning getting a kill in an overtime situation which by the way is like anytime you're contesting the payload at the mm -hmm. at the end of a map and you manage to find a kill 6v6 that's one that goes into that stat like that isn't. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know whether that's really like clutch. It's not a good. I, so who did you vote for stat. that? Because I, 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 oh, I think that they were. They, I voted for lacking. a number one that nobody else went for. By the way. I lacked so. Okay, so okay. Now you've torn me apart to shreds. You actually yeah. just spilled my guts all over the floor, and now oh you're God. supposed to talk about no, you're you number one pick.
Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, I've gone way too hard on you, Johnny, because I can't defend my own thing. <laughs> Who's your number well. one? <laughs> Hydration. <laughs> my number one is because... Oh, who okay. is it? Oh, all right, all right, let it? me say who it is first. My number one is Fearless for Clutch Player of the Year. Well, for getting subbed you into the summer showdown. Me shit because Smurf, you yeah, that, Smurf, Smurf is Smurf. Smurf is so fearless. different, man. But fearless, what? So, in my opinion, prioritizing Fearless over Stand One is the thing that turned the Shanghai Dragons into being an unbeatable team in APAC. About just like a literally legendary team that was stomping everybody. They were on the verge of being defeated 4 0 in the May melee. And they sub in Fearless and play a bunch of Winston compositions. And I think that's when they truly found their style. So it wasn't yeah. just that he clutched that match, but they, they're they so content to play around Fearless's ability on Winston that he almost like, I know this sounds ridiculous, but he almost like clutched the season for them. Oh my God. Because, because got, what are you talking about? They're able to play around him and play comps that so, might not even be optimal, but they make them work and seem so optimal because Fearless that is that good. If they lose that match, you think their rest of the season just is No, whatever. but if they continue to rotate Stand 1 and Fearless, I think that it is possible that they finish at a much more like human level, like a mortal level in the season. Rather I, I don't than know if I'm being Fearless nice here, but I sort play. of accept that argument. I sort of accept that nice. argument as like, it's, it's very, you know, you sound like a yeah. philosopher in many ways. You just like <laughs> came up with something. It's just like, yeah, and they find their identity, their true style, and the nature of the Shanghai Chinese Dragons really came together again. when Fearless was the main tank instead yeah. of Stand One. And like, but I don't know if I'm being too nice here. Like, I think so many other people will just like absolutely no, roast I, you for this. But I, I'm Brent, sort of go at him. I think you it's a, I think that's quite valid. I think what Joshua said is quite valid. Yeah. I I I I I I, I, th I think it's well. quite valid personally. I uh, everyone's scared of Josh's I, did, I didn't really consider fearless <laughs> because I didn't really think about that. I was just I was thinking about more of it the context of individual moments. Yeah, I, I don't know whether I could really point you to that many individual moments from Fearless. It's definitely more of like a big picture. It thing, depends which on how. I, I understand. It, it depends on not. how you interpret the award. <laughs> yeah, much yes. like life. I had in a very a specific ways, interpretation. You know? This is a mm -hmm. toss-up of an award. I mean, you could have literally voted for whoever outside of like a, a make, like make any type of reasonable Ooh. player, and it would have been fine. Who voted for Decay? I had Decay third. I had Decay third as well i believe and because there were so many different picks just simply yeah. the fact that decay got voted for third what twice put him above uh um, I mean, he basically was playing alone for half the fights i mean for half of the season did and you he's pick winning decay them, because huh? he came into washington and just saved their season or just because he made unwinnable games winnable he even <laughs> played dallas houston yeah his dallas yeah. fuel games he was like turning games which should not have been close or competitive like hmm. into like actual matches with how good he was on the uh, do you remember it was uh it was Valiant Fuel like really early on with like they played the Tracer and the Torbjorn no. uh of the the Valiant and like they were like he was just pulling out wizards type stuff. Uh incredible yeah. play. Wizard I think also stuff. I, I would like to put wizard forth stuff. a nomination which I only thought about afterwards as well, which is some combination of KSP or Shax, whichever mm. way you really want to slice that. Because between the two of them, they had a lot of clutch moments this year. To I feel like the Valiant were the kind of team that didn't always set themselves up the best they could have possibly done at the beginning of fights. So there were many moments where they had to kind of scramble from being at a bit of a disadvantaged position. And a lot of the time that came down to big plays coming out from KSP or Shaxx. Like some big headshot was hit or even a couple coming out from KSP or Shax would get into the back line and kill a couple of people. They were, they were very clutch, but it, I find it hard to really say that it was, you know, all down to KSP and he was better than these other candidates or all down to Shax when he didn't play all of the season. So, uh, but I, I think they're, also definitely up there. Interesting that we've got it now distilled to this, but ultimately it was Flatter who walked away with the award. Um, let's shift it along, huh? <laughs> this award. Yeah, shift it. This, this table is an absolute mess. Let's there's just, it there's just tissues this, and shit down yeah. here, and <laughs> empty can, and there's some papers over there. Is, this award uh, is a big one because it's the award no one will see coming, and yet it is so, so important. So, mm -hmm. so important. It yeah. is time for our Bench Player of the Year Award. 
dun, who dun, was dun, dun. the best player on the bench? Yeah. Dun, dun, and this doesn't mean that they have to sit on the bench. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> like, who gets subbed in yeah. uh, and, like, contributes the most? Seventh man of the year, I think, is what it's called. Yeah. Seventh man of the year. Right? Bench player of the year. start all the time. Yeah. Bench player of the year. Okay. So, your nominees. In no particular order, we have Nero as a nominee. Mm -hmm. Hisu as a nominee. And Super as a nominee. What? That's my first! I didn't even get into the top three! Oh, the <laughs> fuck you living, dude! I want to see this shit! Who's what? your first? Oh, you got... oh my god! I can't wait to get to the other awards oh, no, because no, we no. have one coming up and we I'm going fucking deep, dude. Oh, no, I'm no, putting no. on like I'm putting on the latex gloves, dude, and I'm fucking wait, shoving it in because I'm wait. ready to fucking discuss wait, wait, how wait. you guys are overlooking this one individual so much. It actually hurts my brain. When I was voting for this, I had super okay, I I did not have super <laughs> in my top three. I originally had sent in super at number one to Josh, but then I deleted it. And then I put somebody else in, but they didn't make the top three. But yeah, uh, but do, do you want to say who you had in your top I three that KSF. didn't make it? I had KSF. KSF. Yeah, I mean he was decent on Genji when he got KSF. Uh, decent. You know, I I can't believe I that you about, think that's I decent. I felt better about picking KSF than Super. Johnny, who so, was your really? number one? Not number one. No, I didn't have a number one. I mean, Johnny, who was who was your number one? No, we'll discuss my number yeah. one when we get to and the next topic. The I'll award. tell you the my next number topic. two. My number two was super, and I, yeah. I'll say because I think that he enabled the shock to play this Reinhardt composition. King's Row was a staple pillar yes. of the Summer <laughs> yeah, Shock throughout true. the entire season. They were able to turn series around <laughs> because of the momentum they gained from King's Row, and I think well, super have contributed so much yeah, to that. Yeah, no, and number three was Hisu for the record. So the winner yeah. of this year's. Seventh man award, oh, the best I you player. I announced the winner. I, <laughs> that, yeah, I thought, yeah, best we didn't bench even player we the winner. No. of the year. <laughs> oh, well, here we go. Was, I mean, you didn't say, did you? No. I no, didn't, he but, doesn't yeah. know. No, he doesn't know. Oh, I, I yeah. had no idea. Who he won? Brent You're the only one who knows. Super Delisi. Mr. Matthew Delisi is going to be winning there our is. bench player of the year award. I think quite well deserved. I, I had Super as my number one pick. <laughs> um, <Genji gameplay. laughs> I, I'll tell you what though you know, you know what's actually crazy is when I was doing these awards the other night and I put Super as a meme I completely forgot about his Reinhardt play I only thought about what? his no. really? <laughs> shut up I thought no of him as a Genji player yeah well I, I will say this I, I will say this <laughs> I will say this we memed a lot about Super's Genji. We did a VOD review. I woke up with a cat shit in my bed, apparently, when we did that <laughs> one, because I was so upset. Wait, Got what? into a verbal spat with uh, with Mr. Delisi, uh, mm. Super's father. Oh, yeah, true. Um, oh, and man. it caused me to uh, actually just com complete a, uh, do a social media purge. Um, so in the end, worked <laughs> out. But uh, we memed about it. We joked about it. About it. And, and super often as well, his personality, I think, means that he can be the butt of a lot of jokes a lot of the time. It's just his yeah, persona, his personality. It. it just so happens that when you are the only personality in the league, that's just what happens. Um, it's quite unfortunate, but the Jesus, I mean, he, you're, you're pretty good yourself. There's other, right? people, there's other people in the league. No, we, we got a lot of personalities in the league. It's just super just seems to be. Super seems to be one of the more extravagant ones, but he was my number one pick. Okay, and I think. Who did Johnny vote for? I think a no, big reason I'll that talk this about was next, next topic. that he did add depth to the roster. Uh, yes. You know, with the Reinhardt play and with his Genji at the time, which we were joking about. But that kind of depth, he was uh, in a lot of ways what we hyped up Nevix to be when Nevix was the bench bench player. Do you remember? Yeah, I was just waiting for Johnny to figure out a way yeah. to give Except him a word of sharper. Nevix. Super actually lived up to a lot of those expectations. Yeah. I think that you could definitely argue that Super didn't have the most impact as a seventh player because Smurf, in the few times that he did play Reinhardt, looked super serviceable as well. Uh, they probably still would have won the majority of those maps with Smurf playing. But I think w when you talk about like a player that gets subbed in but is also an elite, elite level talent, Super has got to yeah. be one of the top of the list. I, I have said this all season long, but I think that Super and Smurf kind of hurt each other when it comes to these awards because 
if Absolutely. either of them were only were the only main tank on the shock and they got full time, we might be talking about either of them as being the best main tank in the league. And I know that that may come as like a surprise to some people who don't really rate Super that highly outside of his Rhine. But we've seen what he can do on Winston in previous years, and it is top yeah. level. And we've seen what he can do on the Arissa at times as well, and that looks to be pretty <laughs> top level too. Like they, they could be, yeah, you know, like. Top three, How, top five it's the kind same of with main the supports. tanks. I was it's just the same say. with the supports on the shock. Like you have yeah. Violet, Twilight, and Moth. Like how it's hard to like justify a ward for those people because they share so much playtime. How yeah. many Violet other teams is? is uh, uh, how many other teams is super the bench tank in the league? Not many. No, not like many. like three, maybe two. three, maybe three. Yeah, probably two. And probably and the thing is, Shanghai, he maybe. would he would never be fully benched. Probably no, he would never be fully benched yeah. either. Like they would yeah, use him in the same play. capacity now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I now, think he really is like a top level talent. Now we've also yeah, got in his, in his, in his nominations, Hisu as one. Yeah. yeah. So who voted Hisu? I, I voted, voted, voted Hisu. Yeah. You, yeah. you all voted I had Hisu. Him in second. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think yeah. it's it's kind of hard to know exactly who qualifies for this as well because, for example, if we take the San Francisco Shock as another example, you could say that Ans is like a seventh player hey, because he's, make an argument he doesn't for play Carpe. all the time. Mm -hmm. What? Sorry, you can make an argument for Carpe. I mean, you can now, but over the course of the whole season, you can't. Carpe yeah, was definitely their starter for the majority of the season. Here, yeah. So that's the yeah. thing is like, is Hisu their seventh player? I would say yes, because the majority of the time you're expecting Carpe and Ivy or Carpe and EQO to be the people who are fielded. For the majority of the season, it was Carpe and yeah. Ivy. So the fact that Hisu's had so much impact for this team, like the impact that Hisu has had for the Philly is arguably larger than the impact Super had for the shock because he gives them a yeah, whole yeah. different avenue to look at that no one else really covers. Um, but yeah, I think he's a very worthy candidate. Who the hell did Johnny vote for him? Yeah, Johnny, so the next topic for? is underrated player of the year, which is why Johnny oh, okay. wants to save that because he wants for, to roast us it, for not you rating know, them. You yeah. want to know who I vote for? No, no. Who? I, so two of my players in bench Best player of the year did not make it here. Josh, do you remember they who I voted for? Yeah, you were smoking some <laughs> skittles when you submitted these because these are awful, unjustifiable picks. I, I love how brains are so bad and he could easily just not announce them, but then he goes, yo, you guys want to hear mine? <laughs> yeah, 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 I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. For number one, I had Super, for obvious reasons okay. that I've already gone right. over. Fair. All right. yeah, good but day. number two... <laughs> I went I went with Dia. <laughs> Dia! He's not even Dia. the seventh level player on his team! <laughs> did he play it all? I don't think he played once this I think year. He did, did he play, play it all? I think he did what? play a little bit. But Why? he Why? Why, Why Dia? I'm looking it up to see whether he played. Did he play? Yeah. I'm pretty he sure he played. Did, he did not play once this year. Yeah. And I <laughs> felt like that was... a single time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I felt like that was the reason why I picked him. Because I felt like he deserved to play at least once. He's that good. He's a good enough player, you know? What, you would play him over <laughs> DM, the other seventh player for Shanghai? I mean... Here's the thing, that talent, that, that roster does have a lot of talent on, you know what I mean? Ding? It, Would you play him over Ding, maybe the eighth player for Shanghai? He's, Dia has a lot, a lot of talent packed in, and I think that he didn't see, he didn't see play time, but he is talented. Turn off his mic. You don't think so? Turn off just, his just, mic. Do, just, 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 just pull an ounce and just oh. say that you meant DM, but you actually wrote Dia. Nope. No, I wrote Dia. I wrote Dia. And I'll, I'll listen, when Matt gets back, I'll say my third one, because he is actually about to faint when he sees my third pick. Josh, do you oh, remember yeah. my third pick? Oh. Yeah, I know who your third yeah, pick is. Well, yeah, I don't know it. I, I, get I would water. say it's worse I than Dia. I, was gonna, I thought I was going to pass it. I think it's worse God, than Dia. Josh I think it's worse, worse than, Dia. than Dia. I think it's actively a player <laughs> that makes their team worse, or at least did over the course of the, the recent history. <laughs> All right, let's, 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 Are you ready? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, my third pick. He <laughs> can't drink the water. He can't drink the, the water. Best, best He's like, Matt's crying. Of the year. Matt's crying. Was was was, <laughs> was <laughs> it was crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? 
Why in any world is that your pick for seventh man of the year? Best bench player of the year. Again, by the way, didn't play a single map this yeah. year. Here's my third pick. Actively oh, in litigation with their team yeah. for being a bad team. Wait, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fucking sued, bro. Yeah. Why? Why? Because Why Crystal? because Crystal was a good player. When he didn't play. last year. <laughs> Last year, he was a good player, and for whatever it's reason, reason... It's the bench player of this year in our last <laughs> he got, he got in those He got in those legal troubles, didn't he, with the Hangzhou Spark? And he's still, they're still fighting that battle. But he yeah. is technically on a team. So he's technically eligible for the best bench player, and he is True, technically on the eligible. bench. So, for that reason, I was like, okay, what is a, a oh. real pick here that is justifiable, but, but no one's even going to consider? And I thought, Crystal... I, 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 the, the, look, the fucking brand, a better nomination would have been Lulsish. Yeah, I, I, I would have. No, no. Would have caused any harm? Because I mean, Crystal Lulsish only helped with the L and allowed Decay to come back into the team yeah. and won. Yeah, so Crystal, for whatever Brand's got, Crystal, whatever Brand's Crystal, got, I need. Crystal was, he's a good player. It's just unfortunately yeah, not smoking some player. crystals. He's not, he's not in the, he's not like effectively, he's not in the league. What do you mean? He's on the bench. Yeah, but, but wait, this, is, this is people who have been on the bench and they've uh, gone in the game. Listen, I've submitted my results. They can't be changed. I didn't Dude, win. You, that was just my third Were pick. you wearing your commissioner's goggles when you made these picks? Because you're looking so far back in the past, you must have had rose tinted glasses Brent, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question. What, uh, what team does uh, Crystal go to after Hangzhou? Hangzhou. Oh. Wow, he does actually know. He knows. <laughs> that's, that's appalling. Like, you've ruined yeah. the sanctity of this. Of, he didn't, of, of he this didn't win. He didn't even come in the top three. But he could have won. Imagine if one not. of us was stupid enough to, to be like, oh, we're going to make the meme as well. This, yeah, by the crystal. way, for, for any of our American audience, this is why you absolutely must register to vote and actually True. vote in this election because there are people out there like Brent who just go, oh, yeah, fuck it, we'll just vote for whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of your votes actively counts as a dumbass like Brent. No, I was, I was justified. In no possible way were you justified. Oh, wow. There could not have been a worse choice, I truly believe, than Crystal. Yeah, that, was yeah. that, that was literally the worst. I think that was literally the worst yeah. choice. I think that was literally the worst pick. I yeah. can't think of no. any other player that actively made their team worse or caused like problems for their team while being on the bench. Moving yeah. was probably worse. That that's oh, so true. second yeah. worst. True. Yeah. Second worst. Yeah. But but I mean, Crystal's still in the league. And he's a good he is, player. Is, is he? Yeah, yeah he got picked up by Guangzhou. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good player. He's in Guangzhou. Anyway, we can he move is on. He's a good player. player. We can move on from this. Don't worry about it. Oh my god. Brand's been licking toads before the show, I guess. The most yeah. underrated player award. What in the Lord's name is this? Most underrated player. And these are the. Anyway, here we go. Most underrated players. Our nominees oh. are. How did it get to this point? Sado, KSP. And Fury. I cannot believe it. I cannot <laughs> fucking believe it. I simply refuse to believe the absolute incompetent negligence of actually not for any of these categories whatsoever, not voting for fucking Rascal. This guy doesn't get props by anyone on no one's social media radar whatsoever. Everyone's talking about like, oh, Smurf, you know, Smurfies. Poor Smurf. Think about Rascal. He literally came into the league at the start of the year, was the best May. He revolutionized the way you play Echo and set the guidelines for everyone else in the league for months or pretty much like half the season. And then he comes into the Countdown Cup and plays the Genji that actually turns the San Francisco Shock around and they win the series against the Philadelphia FC. How is no one on this planet talking about Rascal as well, one of the most underrated it's... players in the year? It's absolutely hurting my soul! And, uh, he's not a nominee. And he's your winner is... Yeah. <laughs> winner of the most underrated player award. I have a feeling to... this will probably be the last award show of... Uh... <laughs> goes to Sato. Yeah! Now... I think that's I crazy. Had Sado number one. This is fucking I think that's mental. crazy. This, 
How because, has this happened with this because award? Because he is rated. Like, he was underrated last year, but this year, I, everyone thinks he's good. I still think he's underrated. I think he's, like, one of the best ta main tanks in the league, like, if not the best. No, everyone... No, Sado is rated. Nobody thinks that. This is mental what? that he's won this award. It is absolutely he didn't, mental. He didn't get roll star. He didn't get roll star. Yeah, he should have gotten a roll star. So in that sense, I suppose he is a little underrated because yeah. I do feel he was eligible for that who, kind of award. Now the second for him? and the, the third is egregious. Fury? I Fury actually underrated? I voted Fury as number one. Because underrated? I think Fury, n nobody talks about Fury as being in the top off tanks of this year. People are talking about, did, did Fury win a, a roll tank, a roll star? I have. don't believe he did, right? No. But he, but he should have. And no one even talks about him because he splits time with Poco. But he has been, I mean, his performances during the Summer Showdown were absolutely elite level. I, like, the I guy has still that. been as good this year as he's been any year, and he has received none of the credit that it should be his. I voted for Funny Astro as well. I voted I for Funny Astro. insane. What? Why? Exactly. Wow. How? Why? Everyone knows that Funny Astro is like, one of, if not the best, he's like up there with uh, no. with Lee J Gon. No, oh, nobody no, talks no. about him in any any yeah. of those. They always no talk about Lee J Gon. They talk about Moth. They don't talk about Funny not Astro. Even that, man. They talk about FD God or whatever else. But if you're talking main supports, Funny Astro kind of falls to the wayside, and I think it's because he gets overshadowed yeah. by his team a lot. Oh my lord! I feel so, like Funny Astro is so easily Johnny, a top player. Now but that I, you're back, I think Fury is, voted, is never underrated. Why you voted for Rascal? What I yelled about it. <laughs> oh, nobody was listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's worked himself up like a baby, and he needs to be burped. Well, I, 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 I mean, my neighbor. Who else did you vote upset, for? But, uh, number two, I had uh, Sado, and then Fury. So. Nobody else had Funny Astro. I had Funny Astro. Uh, no, I my number one crazy. pick. That's a good pick. My, my number one oh pick was God. one that's not in this top three. <laughs> oh God, now I'm scared. <laughs> Who is it? I think this is quite justified. <laughs> And I well, went you with the, the D and Crystal were justified as well, but I I went with Molly. <laughs> I, okay, I, I Molly was that. good. Actually, Fine. actually, it's it's a it's a good pick. Uh, what he started most of the year, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, once you, I think he started over Keo, after right? Like a, yeah, I think he started after like a month or two mm -hmm. in, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Molly was my was number good. one Not because like acid. So that's actually a good shot. In, in terms of the flex support pick. role, flex support role is stacked really across the board in yeah. the league, and it's very easy to get overshadowed even if you're performing at a reasonable level. And I thought Molly did this entire season. Um, potentially one of the best players on Chengdu, funnily enough, um, in I, my opinion. I, uh, I had KSP in there okay. as well. KSP was I my number the, two. Mm, I think KSP. Uh, I think he was my third pick. I think that KSP's, considering like the amount of just sheer kills he's been able to put up over the course of the season, the amount of value he's been able to have on every hit scan role that they've required him to play, like McCree at the beginning and then moving over to the Ash and the Widowmaker, he's just been a top level talent. One of the biggest reasons that the Valiant have made it so far. He yeah. was at the top of our overall kills for this um, this year, I think, right? Mm. Like he was the the number one. Okay, he's played quite a lot of maps, but he hasn't played the most maps. He's still got a very high kill per map uh, count, so I, I think he's he's absolutely not talked about enough as like a proper elite hit scan talent. And something I like to see them do with roll stars in the future is uh, is separate the tanks into off tanks and main tanks. I yeah, feel I like so too, uh, yeah. I feel like there is like players like Hanbin, players like Sato, uh, who at least in my opinion kind of got robbed in terms of roll stars this year because of the way it's set sure. up. So. Yeah. Hopefully in the future we're able to uh, maybe make that yeah. change. Because I, I think did that also. Already. I think it would just optimize it a bit. I did yeah. that already. I separated main tanks and off tanks too, too. But I know no one else would do it. So it's no, like I did as well. I voted for yeah. two main ta uh, two main tanks and two yeah. off tanks. But it that, still felt kind of crappy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the same could also be said for supports. Now I actually didn't separate two main supports and two flex supports. Neither this year. did I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, I normally I do, it. but I feel like main support doesn't have generally like as much. I, I submitted Lee Jig on for Rollstar and then the rest were flex supports. Uh, mm, yeah. So mm. but but perhaps that's something they should consider as well. The thing is are, uh, supports aren't really as heavily defined as the main tank and off tank are. Are, are we talking about Rollstar next week? Cuz I think we could have, we have Yeah, yeah, next week I well, think so. I don't believe that the Rollstars have been announced for every 
Oh no, they have, right? Yeah. Have they been announced for everything now? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We're gonna, we can we're gonna, talk about next today, week we've got a big episode because we've, yeah. we've got to do our yeah, actual, we about next week. Our actual yeah. grand yeah. finals predictions and preview show and also we can Talent go over take Roll down Stars. recap, yeah. roll stars. Yeah. Be a lot to go over next week, so yeah. Uh yeah, overall I think most underrated player, this is honestly just Kind of fucking wild shit, to be honest yeah all over the place a lot of a lot i think of the reason that this is so wild though is that people have such different perceptions of how people are rated yeah yes. yeah you know like people just the definitions it, are loose yeah it's so difficult to tell like how the community as an entirety rates somebody yeah and then you have to think yeah. about whether they are under or overrated it's so I mean, difficult wait wait yeah. what we should have done is <laughs> Who are the most overrated players? That that would have that would have really oh, rattled some that people. Would have been, I would have been spicy. I I know some players who are like burn to some out, bridges. We're not gonna do that. Yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm re I'm 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 ready to move on. Yep. Uh, this award is a little bit different to what you're going to be used to, ladies and gentlemen at home. Uh, and this year we're going to be going. Wait, what do I mean? This year? Well, uh, it's not a player, but it is definitely an award that we're giving out, and it's going to go to. The play Wait. of the oh, yeah. year. Mm. Now, this is an interesting one here. The play of the year. Of co over the course of the whole season, now I know because of COVID, it, for me personally, my brain doesn't work too good. But in terms of the nominees, here they are. The Fletta headshot clutch, presumably in the finals to reverse sweep. The mm -hmm. EQO blade, also in the finals. <clears throat> And the Shanghai Dragons reverse sweep in the May Melee. I suppose the whole overarching match would be oh. one of the best plays. Wait, really? That this made? Yeah. I didn't so, realize that was a... That I mean... A play is four maps. This, <laughs> this, <laughs> well, I suppose them scary. winning yeah, the final map, like right? Moment, the winning, the winning I moment, I suppose, right? Oh, okay. These are our nominees. And the winner is of the play of the year. The EQO Blade. Mm. Okay. I think I yeah. I both put this number one. I think this is yeah. one of the best Overwatch plays of all time. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I right. totally I, agree with this. I had this at number two. I had the flooded one at uh number one, but this was just madness. Yeah, I had. I actually had a. I had Bren's casting from the Dallas homestand of Hacksaw's Blade at number three. Why? Where he was just screaming at the top of his lungs, it's go time, over and over again. That was and then he went down the stairs and killed yeah, a bunch yeah. of people. Yeah. It was uh, Vancouver Titans against the Los Angeles Gladiators. You had that as the third moment. Yeah. Why? It's hard to remember exactly Why? all of the moments of the league. It was a cool blade, and it was probably your best casting moment. <laughs> you peaked early. <laughs> it's the game of the I'm not season. gonna lie though, I sometimes feel like that, man. The home stands uh, were good. Yeah. casting, well, casting yeah, in front of an audience. Like, anyway, it was a cool, it was a cool, it was a cool I, I was actually really envious at the start of the year that I didn't get to go to the home stands because we already had our studio in LA, right? Yeah. I think it would have been so, like, home stands are my favorite thing. Like, when mm. we went to Dallas last year, yeah. Atlanta last year, yeah. it's incredible. I wish I was. Yeah, I do. There's something special. Poor Johnny. Did you bow? Did you ask the monkey's paw to uh, to cancel what's, the home stand? So wait, the, what's the monkey's paw? I was like, what the hell is the monkey's paw? The, the uh, witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, basically. Witchcraft. Yeah, what the hell are you, you're, you're, hell like, are you talking you're about? You're jealous of the home stands, so COVID <laughs> comes in and just stops them all from happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, fulfill oh, oh, your oh, wish. Did anyone, no one can have home stands. Instead, did hundreds vote of thousands a... of people will die, so we can't have home stands. No. Uh, did anyone vote, did anyone vote no. for anything else? I want home stands. Yes, I, I mean, I, not, for my number one, it was the Fletter headshot, because okay. I felt like, in terms of the stakes, the stakes were high. Well, not the stakes. The stakes were the same probably in both of these matches. But in terms of what was on the line here, it was the best of five reverse sweep, which is uh, never happens in esports e ever. Never happens really, or just in sports in mm -hmm. general. Like a yeah, reverse sweep of that right. many maps in a row, and it was potentially not about to end, but it was potentially about to get much more difficult. And Fleder came out with a headshots to to clutch it by switching to Widowmaker. That is. Just iconic in my brain um, as 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 a moment. Eco was my second pick. For my third, what the hell did I pick for my third? <laughs> my third was. Oh, uh, it's the third. I did moss three k on King's Row. I couldn't think of a third. <laughs> yeah. so it was but that was a cool yeah. play. That was a I mean, cool that, play. That's about as close as you get to like an alley oop. Yeah. Board, so. Did anyone so else have any had, unusual um, plays? Sorry. Yeah. I, I had, everyone uh, had at least one different play. In fact, everybody had. Yeah. All three of you had the Fledder 
play and, and the, the EQL, EQL play one. in one and two in various different ways. So the the reason that that third play is on the nomination, the uh, the winning moment of the May melee, that reverse sweep, is just because I had it as second. So that just alone boosted it into third huh. place. But that wasn't because even a play. Everyone else had a different. Well, I felt like it was. I mean, fuck it. It was like a moment. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I, I yeah. should. Everyone else had different fusion season as the play of the year. <laughs> yeah, I should have picked that. It didn't every win game. that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. There so, were clearly two big plays in everyone's mind, though. Yes. The Fleda yeah. and the EQO mm -hmm. play. Absolutely. For my third, I linked it to you, Kurt, so maybe you can bring it up. But it's actually Dreamer's Earth Shatter on Route 66 versus Dallas Fuel. And there's nothing as clutchy, so like it doesn't have the fancy context to it that some of these other plays have. But I think it was just like a creative, incredible Earth oh, yeah, Shatter that was where cool. he jumps from the payload up to the balcony <laughs> on Route 66 and then just shatters six people. I mean... For ah. me personally, it doesn't get any better. This is why so I had I to vote for Decay as Clutch Player of the Year because he had the win fights like that started like this. I mean, <laughs> th this is just destruction. And also, like Mitch's cast here made the yeah, moment so really much good. better. Yeah. He's, he's like, that's wrong. I, that's wrong. And I just I love loved he, it. I love that he tries to jump up the first time, fails, and, he and misses, then gets yeah. it the second and gets it. It's, it's it so is really cool, actually. I think part of the reason I love it so much, too, is because it's so demoralizing for Gamsu. So I know that between the two Reinhardts, like, the fact he just jumped up from the cart and then shatters Gamsu. Like, the ad... It's it's like... um, What is it called, Matt? When you, like, dunk over someone in NBA, it's like posterize someone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 and you just make a fool out of God. someone, just jumping over someone and dunking. Uh, it's like... Uh, more, so than, so sick. more so than anything else, this is the one where I want people to go into the comments and link yeah. timestamps of their favorite moments because <laughs> yeah. it's very easy to say, like, oh, this player was good this year, yada, yada, yada. But when you have to think of, like one specific play it's so easy for a lot to just escape your memory mm -hmm. and it's so prevalent for like recency oh. bias as well like i remember a play from right at the beginning of the year where it was the it, it's like it's not even that good a play because it was two teams that really didn't do anything but it was washington justice playing against london and raw comes in at the final moments in the fifth map of the series in front of his home crowd of washington and he lands like a five-man earth shatter to be able to win the team oh fight God, and nearly yeah. clutch out the map. And it was like enormously uh, huge. And listening back to that now, when we've had so many months of no crowd sound, it sends tingles down my spine re-watching it. I didn't nominate it for this play because it's like two teams that really didn't do anything. And they ended up losing the map anyway because Glister got yeah. it big as they came <laughs> back in. But it was still a sick moment. And I'd love to know if any of our viewers have remembered moments from earlier in the year that all of us forgotten about. Because th those things are just so fantastic to yeah. remember and rewatch. But all I can think do, about is Crystal and Dia. Before you do, <laughs> link a play down below. Make sure you watch this next segment because it might have some good moments from this. This oh yeah, oh, true what, actually. The next award. Oh yeah, the next award might well, have some. That's what I mean. We've had well. ups, we've had downs, and now it is time for the funniest play of the year because this. This this is all over the place now. This humor has is, to be the this, easy there, one. There's no other way. Humor is subjective. Easy is all I'm one. saying. Humor is humor subjective. Is subjective. Funniest moment of the year. Our nominations are in no particular order. <laughs> Nori the cat banning May. <laughs> so what? Jake solo casting. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and sex big dick oh, as our nominees. Yes, dude. Now. The winner of the funniest moment of the year, and again, humor is subjective, is... Sex Big Dick! <laughs> what is this? What is this? I couldn't find the moment in the actual VOD because they've removed it. So I had to go into my companion VOD where we had already ripped the footage live. So I think they edited out Who's in the YouTube it? VOD. So this is from my this is from my YouTube channel. That's you? This is why my big fucking Oh, that's him? There. Oh. That doesn't look this, like you. Whoa. This is pre-egg, but there it is. <laughs> The the iconic iconic moment. Did no, I didn't even dick. see it. I didn't even see it. I had to go back and I was like asking my chat, like, what the fuck? What are they all talking about in the chat? Uh, did nobody, <laughs> nobody had crunch time? Uh, um, no, because I'll tell I would make fun of my own. Thing. I thought that I, was just embarrassing, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I was, was thinking so back. Uh, 
I and was then thinking I back. I had a Jaws in DC. Did anyone see the Jaws when they when I he didn't know what the hell you a... were talking about there. Jaws the, in DC. When, when, the uh, historical Hank figure thing, the T. Like, the uh, America guy, and then oh, Jaws came shit. out with the T, and like it was so cringe. But <laughs> that was a. Uh, oh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, uh, I know I what you're talking brainstorming about. Brainstorming that actually with Golden yeah. Boy and Jaws. At I the also time. thought about uh, the. I also thought about nominating the the Washington homestand uh, circle performer. Thing. Oh, yes. I nominated the Washington. Uh, my third pick was the Washington homestand founding fathers. Do you guys remember? So they, they had these enormous like bald oh, head founding yes. fathers, and they're playing this Washington Justice killer beat as the players are coming out. It's like I can't even do it justice, but it was like a sick fucking bassy beat, and these enormous founding fathers, these big president figures, are just fucking fucking bopping it at the back like fucking <laughs> bopping away and it was killing Catch me him. i was i was creased man yeah it was I by was... far and away for me the funniest moment of the year but i knew that not everyone had shared in that joy i i when do remember he, uh... you you uh you literally bending over laughing laughing yeah, at that I was moment crying, <laughs> laughing. Watching it. it was i have completely Something forgot about, about that fucking i don't know like I don't know who who is it like Thomas Jefferson just head banging to the Washington Justice intro I, beat. Yeah, it's killing my, me. my funniest moments. I didn't really. I couldn't really recall any funny moments. Like the season has just been quite depressing. You know what I mean? It has in the latter right. half. It's been very repetitive because of COVID, and it's been all online for yeah. sure. There have been far fewer funny moments, but so, so there were I, some I remember great ones that we've just forgotten. I voted for here. I, like, I couldn't really think of much, but I voted for. I only voted for two things. I didn't put in a third. I did uh, Jake solo casting because I was just like that was the funniest thing to me. He just didn't stop talking. Mm. It didn't take. Yeah. It, it seemed like it didn't take Yaki a breath. God. <laughs> yeah, that was that was quite funny. But then my number two vote was. Me not being fired for a third year in a row. <laughs> the Funniest whole... moment. So I mean, that funny. is quite funny, They're isn't so it? Funny. Yeah. Think I of mean, everything uh, I've gotten away with over the course of the years. I almost broke a ten thousand dollar LED screen by chucking an orange at it. Oh god, um, yeah, that was hilarious. I contracted strep throat. I mean, they wouldn't have fired me from contracting strep throat, but I mean, they did kind of <laughs> feed me something. I think I'm actually liable to like sue the league if I wanted to. Based on what, for contracting back, strep yeah. throat because you yeah because ate... they. But they put they put the six million Scoville's extracts just yeah. on a chicken nugget and didn't tell me. I think I ate that too, didn't I? No, I think you've I signed ate... away. No. Only I think you've signed away your rights to to to. I do mean, that when you maybe anyway. I, I, uh, yeah, maybe. What, what are you gonna say, Matt? Your I career is this, in uh, Kurt's hands, by the way. That's just awesome as well. Go on, Matt. I gotta find this clip of Jaws. It's like yeah, I do remember like, now. Actually, I, I know what you're talking about. Out out. This I, thing, I don't like, want you to find it because because I don't know. It's just it was okay. Our segment producer um, Fish, the guy that came up with the idea as well. We were brainstorming it with Fish and Golden Boy and Jaws and the other guys that were there at the homestand. And oh, he recently it, tweeted about how he thought that was his uh, high point of the season as well. I right, do think uh, here it is. Also, that sideshow video was pretty good. When you like, when we walk through the monitors after main melee or something, we walk through like the graphic overlays, the and you like jump oh, in, right. and then you walked across. Like that was pretty funny. Kurt, I just yeah, found yeah, that. Was like, Fish did a great job. Yeah. He did, yeah. yeah. But I feel like f funny moments, like the scripted funny, is often less funny just yeah. by the nature of you knowing that it's supposed sure. to be funny. Whereas something like sex, big dick, or that's why I found Nori banning May so funny as well, is that there was no scripting around yeah, that. Dude. We had failed for weeks and that weeks to ban May, and the community was getting more and more annoyed about it. And we put yeah. a fucking cat on the broadcast and they just pick a better hero <laughs> pull than we do immediately. Oh, you gotta see Jaws dressed like this. It's too what? good. Is it? He actually, is actually, it actually uses his headshot good? for everything. Huh? Oh, here it okay. is. <laughs> we did use this as the picture for his talent takedown uh, profile. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. made me think of it. Because it was London against uh, Washington. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I then mean... uh, Hex comes out and he's got like a belly shirt on. Hex loved that moment as well. You can just know that he loved this moment. That was the pretty crowd was like, do we boo? Do we cheer? I remember this. Just I like... remember this. They just did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hex. God. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Is not one of the funniest moments of the year. I love Hex in he that costume, to be honest. Because... <laughs> Damn. 
He he's, just beat him down. Of, he's kind of drowning in that top. Like it's clearly made for a much <laughs> yeah. taller person as well. So it's just funny to see Hex like in his dad's American clothing. <laughs> This is so great. It really is funny. It uh, really yeah, is USA. USA. Is he just yelling USA? Yeah. 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 USA. That's, what no. is, that's what I think is the funniest, is that all American <laughs> crowds are just instantly put into a fever as soon as you say three <laughs> words, USA. I, I remember at the World Cup, I started a USA chant when I just, yeah. It, it's very it's, easy and very fun to do because it's just in London or just said that like the hell's going on. Yeah, I mean oh, London at this did point. Did we get into the circle of people after this? Yes, we hyped yeah, everyone so up with that chanting USA, and then the people started dancing. This is the <laughs> this is the funniest moment of the year. This entire sequence is just incredible. <laughs> How is this not? This is even funnier to me though. Is the juxtaposition between that and this, as you yeah. just as you just watch two. <laughs> 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 I forgot how weird I, this was. I love how all out the teams went for homestands, though. Like, yeah, yeah. Just throw out everything really at it. I, I the, Justice homestands, like, uh, like were the one that I went to. Like, the the venue was awesome, and like the place of the hotel was awesome. Like, uh, the whole area down there uh, by the water. Yeah, was <laughs> it's dope. just like, what's happening? Yeah. Dude? Yeah. By the way, has anyone ever said that they were originally planning to have these guys dressed in Anna and Farrah, uh, sorry, Mercy and Farrah cosplay? Or, or I, 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 I've said it on stream. We the, I've said it on stream a couple of times, but yeah. yeah, they, we, yeah. They were, we were at the homestand and they were like, oh yeah, there's going to be some aerial dancing with Farrah and Mercy sick. cosplay. And they had to remove it for some reason, probably due to safety, but also can you imagine the fanfic that would have come out of Two women just mm -hmm. with their bodies entwined around each other in Sh Farah and Mercy cosplay. It would you just have been, been awesome. so much meat. Yeah, for sure. that would have been, been awesome an ideal world. Trumped the, the Rule yeah. 34 content. The Rule 34 content would be incredible. I mean, this moment, but if they're dressed as Overwatch characters, it's <laughs> so much fodder for Rule 34. This, so this whole, this is a, we should have done walk out of the year. This is the walk out of the year. You think Hell so? Hell yeah. It's not. Oh, like absolutely. It. This it's entire. Mental. Uh, I also think the uh, the NYXL homestand, like, uh, they had, like, a really sick walkout. But this is just, there's so much in this walkout. I think there's... the Founding Fathers are about to come up as well. No, they're not. Wait, it, no, was, they was, was this really that mental? I, th I think the Founding Fathers are after this video. But you don't really see what we saw, which is them just at the back, just chilling out, head bobbing. They're yeah. just kind of walking out. But you'll see how fucking funny they look. I, so I love weird. this, though. This is such... A long, awesome walkout, though. I remember this theme song was kind of dope as well. It was really good. Da, da, really da, good theme da, song. Da, da, da. Yeah. I'm about it. Right, I, cool. I want to see the Founding Fathers. I want I to see this. I, I don't want to move I on. I don't remember that. No, yeah, I actually have forward, two like, more moments. What is the oh Founding Fathers? They, 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 they are good. Let it go. Let it go. Can you skip if ahead? If you skip forward like 10 seconds uh, just to get through this video. There we go. I hear they go. Here they come. Imagine these enormous dumb bobbleheads <laughs> just, just bopping at the back of the room where no one's looking at them to the walkout music of the Washington Justice. <laughs> He's gonna run over the camera guy. He's just going to take him out. The serious looking faces of these people. And the then... whole crowd's like, yeah! I, this, I remember saying at the time, I've never seen anything more commercialized America than this. You've converted yeah. historic figures into just these bobbleheads as they're leading <laughs> yeah. them out. Yeah. That, that's Whoa. the funniest. That's I, I want that to go above Sex Big Dick for me. This whole this whole chain of events, which is incredible. It, it is incredible. It's yeah. very Yeah, it's very <laughs> so, memorable. All right. So before we move on, quickly, yeah. I'll just say I didn't vote for this, but you know, it depends on your sense of humor, etc. <laughs> Part of me wanted to vote for Washington Justice beating Dallas with the K as funny because uh, I thought that was fucking hilarious. I thought that yeah, was, that you know, one. you can you can argue about like, oh, is that funny? You know, poor players, you know, rule bending, like whatever you want. I thought that uh, part of me was like, that's so funny. Nope. That the K just like, ah, oh, sorry, pals, you know. I was out. just about to say another one, but. Uh, now that we talk um, about funny moments, I was like, ah, uh, Custa putting the, opening up that email on stream at the beginning of the year. <laughs> that wasn't really a oh, funny damn. moment, though. Well, that wasn't really oh, that Not funny. a funny moment, but it wasn't <laughs> in this <laughs> year. Really. Laughing at other people's failure, yeah. I love Scott. Um, so, uh, one thing as well that I had number third. 
was Philadelphia signing Chipso. <laughs> because at the time, <laughs> people were fucking livid. We had Jane in yeah. the eSports come oh, on that. Yeah. Oh. We had the Philadelphia Fusion yeah. hot tub stream with Burn and Sideshow. People yeah. were crazy. That was last year, though. That wasn't this year. That yeah, was, that was, was this year. season. This season. It was, yeah. 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 Sure. That oh, was no. incredibly good, actually. Uh, that whole day was yeah. a fever dream. We of turned just into yeah. TMZ content. for a day. I was just yeah, jumping but, uh, on the latest trends That's what and I drama. want this offseason to be like as well. If there are any teams, social media managers, players out there, please announce your stuff with the most drama possible in the offseason. Because not only is it fun for everybody, but you can rake in the views. This is yeah. what Call of Duty figured out years ago. Is yep. just, just make drama out of nothing. Uh, it doesn't hurt look, you. There might be some people on Reddit who are like, mm, I don't like this guy because he was nasty to another player. But people generally <laughs> just love drama. And, yeah. and just make and it reality you, uh, TV. Yeah, it's so if you, funny. If you, need, uh, if you need any help, I I'm free to consult. I used to do Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm a, I'm about free it. Free to consult. Uh, yeah, on how <laughs> how you can start drama with your free Matt agency. Matt does watch a lot of reality TV, so yeah, I sure. Sure. Love sure. Island. Matt's Love Island good. USA is on. It's a great show. Yeah, you know, right. we watched Love Island at your house after Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah. We did. Oh, yeah. It was really, it was we really great. We football at Thanksgiving. It was like last match, uh, last game. It was like Atlanta Falcons or something. And it was like a rollover. And Matt was like, ah, oh, let's watch Love Island instead. And he turned Look. off the football on Thanksgiving football, to watch Love Island. Football is only good if you, got, if you got some money on it or you got fantasy. Otherwise, yeah, who exactly. cares? I quite like Love Island. It's a great show. Um, I think it is. It's some um, some good television, to be honest. Yeah, some good. That'll telly. be the first thing we establish as a as a as a network after we're done doing all you can these. See. Podcasts. Well, we'll Love a, Island. Well, I can see how it all comes Island. together. <laughs> Starring um, Bren. The MVP Bren award. This is a serious one, mm. and it's actually mm. our second last award that we've got to hand out here today. So let's get this started. The most Christ. valuable player award. This is the one that Plat Chat has decided to go for here. Our nominees are as follows. Bletter, Void, and Alarm. And the winner of the most valuable player of 2020, according to Plat Chat, goes to Void. Oh. Mm, I'm a big fan of this. I'm a big yeah, fan I'm of this as well. Fan. Uh, when I was trying to pick somebody from uh, Shanghai, uh, even when I actually did my MV, so so the reason I didn't want to give Alarm the Rookie of the Year is because I actually wanted to give Alarm the MVP. Uh, How does that make any sense? If he's MVP, he has yeah, to be Rookie yeah, of the Year. He doesn't have to because yeah. you don't want to give you don't want to give both the awards. You want to give a shot at somebody else. You kind of so I gave. It, that's no, so no, weird. That's not how it works. Yeah, it is. But no, because you you're, you're then like credit someone in a category. Yeah, you don't no, discredit someone no, to make no. to make room for someone uh, else. But if I had to, if when I was trying to pick somebody from Shanghai, I always circled back to Void as yep. my pick from Shanghai. Uh, yeah. I thought, I thought Void. I even thought it was getting to a point where you could have made an argument that he was just like not talked about enough, like in general, uh, how good his season was and how just overall like. It didn't even matter which off tank. He was just dominant on every single yeah. one. Like, it didn't it even insane. matter what else was going on in the game. He was absolutely insane all season long. And I feel like as well, yeah. when he was on the Gladiators, um, he was good. He was good on the Gladiators and maybe a little bit underrated, actually, in a lot of aspects. But him coming, uh, moving over to the Shanghai Dragons and being surrounded by top quality talent in almost every single role alongside the coaching structure that the Moon provided just elevated... Boy to the next level for me. He was my number one pick uh, for the overall MVP as well, the official one. Yeah. Um, uh, and Same. he was my number one pick here as well. Yeah. I, also I think that he also benefited from other people that he was competing with last year, some of them falling off. Like, for example, Janu, who absolutely, I think, would have been ahead of him in off tanks last year. Obviously, he wasn't able to reach his potential this year because he was on a bad team. Or rather, he was on a team that exploded and then moved to a bad team. Someone like Fury wasn't really able to reach his full potential, That's even true. though I do think he was underrated a bit this season because he split time with Poco. So it's difficult to argue that Fury is ahead of uh, Void over the course of this year. And uh, I think that when you look at Sigma being added in as well, that really helped Void. Like, he's a, an unbelievable Sigma player. His positioning is always perfect. And he's just, he plays the hero in such a... Uh, I like to say that he, like, checkmates his opponents because he puts himself in positions where they just can't contest him. Otherwise, the rest of his team's gonna murder them all. 
Yeah. So I, I actually I voted for Fleta number one. Mm -hmm. So um, I think Fleta is a reasonable choice. Yeah. I think yeah. that this year was defined a lot about the damage players on teams, mostly because of hero pools that obviously play a big part of the season. Flexibility required in that regard. And I also think that there was a massive amount of fantastic off tank players throughout the season. So I don't yeah, want to put true. Void down, but if you def it depends on how you define value. Because uh, I think Flera is in large part a very unique player. I don't think there's a lot of players like him in the league. Whereas, you know, Shanghai Dragons, could have they remained the Shanghai Dragons uh, with Fury instead of Void, with Choyobin instead of Void? I'm not trying to put Void down and the incredible play he put forth um, all year throughout. But I do think that Fleta was so unique in what he provided for the Shanghai Dragons and consistently brought elite level performances across so many metas. That is something that not a lot of damage players in the league were able to do throughout Definitely. the season. So that's why I picked yeah. Fleta number one. Yeah, I think, I think Carpe, super reasonable. Yeah, I think Carpe towards the end of the year, you could probably make that argument against, right? Because they played uh, Hisu and Ivy. But I, I still think Carpe had a really good year uh, all through. I think he definitely kind of... If the season was reversed, if like we started with yes. the end of the season and worked backwards, I think a lot of people's recency bias would lead them to have Carpe up I, at the top. I still had, yeah. I still had Carpe in my top three, uh, just because I thought, mm. I kind of thought past the recency bias of like, and you kind of heard a lot of the players in the league kind of talk that they thought he was the best Ash player and Ash was so important throughout the league. His team was really consistent in the regular season all the way through. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. a lot that kind of goes with it. It's just unfortunate what the last three weeks, last month of the season, you didn't really see a lot, right? If he was just uh, in the server, he could have been like a very well, like forward well, front it, running candidate. That almost happened with Sinatra last year because he like uh like everyone kind of thought like, well, after the Zarya was gone, like what is he gonna play? Like and then he just starts popping off on Doomfist, right? Like it kind of well, if, if Doomfist never came in the last year, you would have kind of had like another argument, like, oh well, you know. He was really good for three stages and then yeah. just kind of fell off. Like uh... Possibly, but I think also one of the things, just to talk about Sinatra, the winner from last year a little bit, one of the great things about Sinatra is that he was, he always seemed able to be able to pick up characters and yes. still provide a lot of value to his team because a lot of the value that Sinatra provides or provided was not necessarily because he dominated at his hero, but because of like leadership and the way that he communicates and the way he yeah. like thinks about the game and, and plays the game. Whereas for somebody like um, Carpe, you can't really say that when he doesn't play the the Sombra when they need him to, for example. And he hasn't really, even though we have seen him broaden his hero pool over the course of his entire career, like he's played even like stuff like Genji occasionally. So we know that he can play a bunch yeah. of different stuff if they need him to. He doesn't tend to at the top level. If, if the meta would have shaken out differently towards the end of the season and he would have kept playing consistently and they would have had the same type of end to the season, I think he would have been much higher up on a lot of other people's lists. Yeah, I can yeah. agree with that. I had two people who, uh, who weren't even, they didn't even make the top <laughs> three here. Yeah. Uh, I had Fearless as my number two pick. Okay. For MVP. I think that's pretty interesting. I, I quite like that, yeah. Um, and for my number three pick, I had Moth. <laughs> and I... I stand by this. <sighs> and I stand by this. And I'll tell you why right now. No joke. I think that... I think that Moth is a pretty integral part of the machine that is the San Francisco Shock. I Was don't think English? you can argue integral when he doesn't, when he's been subbed out to so much like success. Whole, whole, yeah, and they were great when they didn't have him. Yeah, no, but not for a little while. They took a bit of time to adjust, and they still play Moff even regularly recently. They do. do. Moff is. Yeah, I was actually, I was just looking up stat times. Okay. I think this is quite interesting, actually. I was yeah. looking up play times from the San Francisco Shock because I was looking up to see, like, how much did Rascal play this season? Because I think a lot of people think, you know, Rascal didn't really get very much play time. So they might say, oh, well, what the hell is Johnny think doing, thinking that he's like an MVP caliber? Oh, not MVP, but like. Are um, you saying you thought that? So you play. had to verify yourself. No, I actually looked this up before oh, okay. the show yeah. because me and Matt were having this discussion about Rascal because I was talking. Well, the, really? Uh, about... You guys did? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that um, warms my heart. Wow. And Rascal has played. Yeah, we thought um, we were... So out of a playable something like 22 hours. So Choyobin at number one with 22 hours. Obviously, he's the off tank. He plays it all. 
Um, Str- uh, bleh, Rascal is at 13 and a half. So he's played more than half of the playtime this year for yeah. the shock. And yeah. Moth is sat at 16 and a half. So oh. Moth has certainly played. I mean, I, I, what even is that? 16 divided by 22. That's uh, 72% of the season he has uh-huh. played. So it's yeah. still a large chunk of the season that Moth has played, even though we've been in a double flex support meta for a lot of the year. I think people... He's played a lot early. People have recency bias. They like to think about the uh, the Violet the violet Twilight uh, support line a lot. And they yeah. think about mm-hmm. how, okay, Moth's not that important if they can play with, uh, with those two and still in. But there was a period where they looked worse when Moth wasn't playing. And I, I think it does go to show... The importance of having Moff as just this consistent backbone, and it's uh, it's a role where the MVP award is probably never going to go to a main support player. I think just because of the nature of the role, yeah. you go under the radar. Yeah, that's like true. It. And it's uh, it's uh, at least to acknowledge it from my perspective is is almost as good as winning it. So I think that Moff was was up there. That's why he's my number three. Yeah, I think yeah. every other role in the game kind of tends itself better to having those like big hero standout moments than playing main support. So I think yeah. I, and I just providing agree. more value to your team as well, like something that Jonathan was talking about earlier. There's a lot of the times where you feel like you could have played with a different main support and maybe got a similar amount of value. Where I I do think that Moth had something a little special to their yeah. team. Yeah, Absolutely. alarm and anybody else any uh, have any other weird votes or was it mainly just alarm, flutter, and void? I mean, I, I kind of said I had Carpe in there, yeah. but that was, I guess, probably the weirdest. But I, I don't even, I think you could have made an argument for like five players here probably, and it yep. would have been valid either way. Yeah. Jonathan had not... Violet. That was the only other one that no one else yeah. mentioned. Yeah. yeah. A, a, I mean, a reasonable one, yeah. A reasonable I mean, those one. are my final five when I went and did my actual MVP voting. Uh, the three that I had, uh, mm. Alarm, Void, Carpe, Fleta, and Violet. Those are kind of the ones that I had. Now this next Weren't segment. They... Go ahead. Sorry. I, I just want to say, weren't they supposed to like publicize like publicly who voted for what in the MVP votes? I think I they know. said I... they can, but I don't know whether they will. I know that some of the Overwatch League writers and stuff like that actually did an article where they published yeah. their reasoning as well as uh, their yeah. votes. Um, and some of those were a little strange, like a little different to what we would have imagined. Uh, but, you know, the, the justification was always pretty reasonable. So, yeah. I mean, uh, because, I mean... I, I think that, you know, yeah, you can have your own opinion on this, but I, for one, think that when you vote on major awards like these, you should be held accountable publicly, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I guess that weeds out yeah. people who, generally speaking, you know, don't take the war too seriously or waste their votes and yeah. therefore impact the result of it. I think that when it comes to these awards, they are so serious and like, I mean, I don't want to get too yeah. neck beardy but uh, i mean it matters a ton to these players and you're doing a right. disservice if you're not taking it seriously or throwing your votes away and therefore i think you should be held uh, pu- accountable yeah. publicly I, and therefore i, I think part of my it. thing is i always think i'm like well i'm like hopefully everybody picks out of the same like four or five players you can like logically make a argument for but then you obviously know that there's some people who just kind of go outside of that yeah uh where like, I think it would be like nice Moth, to, know, to give them credit. Like Moth, uh, yeah, to give them credit. But I, I don't think Brent actually voted for Moth on his actual uh, thing. Didn't he? When, well, I, I did nominate him because the, the, the so way like the voting the worked yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're was like him, you yeah. nominated who you thought would go and then, you got, and then it was narrowed down even more and then you had to vote from that. And obviously Moth didn't make the list, but I did vote initially for Moth to be included. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to throw the top. When, you're, when you've got it whittled down to the top 10, you can't exactly throw too hard, you know? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, it's time what for a very one? cool segment. Mm. <sighs> because this one, I don't even know what the heck is going to come out of this one here. It, it's All time right. for the best Bren's Player of the Week of the Year <laughs> award. Presented by T-Mobile. Yeah, presented by t if, you, if we wanted to, sure. It can be presented by T-Mobile. It is presented by T-Mobile. I mean, the Brens Player of the Week is presented by T-Mobile, by T-Mobile, but of the year? We have an alternate yeah. Brens Player of the Week for this week. Oh. Yeah, we have, we have another one. So we have a player, player of the we week have a, we have a, Because it's a, new, it's a new week. We've got to do a Player of the Week every week. Oh. But this is... An oh, award we... on top of it. So the, the last, oh. this isn't the last segment. The last segment will be the Brands Player of the Week. But this oh, one here. I piss so bad. You have to pee. Yeah, so bad. Wait, I've needed the restroom like the, the entire time. Podcast. I've been I... jittering. 
You guys can wait for this. Just wait, Johnny. Come on. You went and changed I, your outfit, and then you I'm came just back. Like, I'm just in a state of shock. I'm just okay. like the last few episodes. I've had to pee like an hour 45 in, and it's just, am I becoming old? The best yeah. Gwen's too much water? player I, of the week of the year. The nominees are Zoe. Mm. Achilleos taking out Fielder. And John Spector. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but it's it is funny that all of the Brens Player of the Weeks are not players. They are members of staff. <laughs> they don't want they nobody, they nobody uh, vote for me. Oh yeah, by the way, actually, I must note here that I took the I took the overarching judicial decision as the person that was counting up the votes to exclude the top votes from both Matt and Reinforce, who only voted for themselves. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, but come on, dude. Matt like, voted number one vote for himself. Jonathan voted number one vote for himself. I don't remember either of them getting Brent's Player of the Week at any I point. Won it, I uh, did. I won it last week, right? What I win it for? I don't remember, I and remember. therefore I, I took the decision yeah. to remove them because otherwise they would have been in joint second place. Good job, I felt Josh. that was not in the spirit of the vote. Good job, Maybe Josh. Maybe you should I actually... go to the T-Mobile Wikipedia and actually read the list of compilations. I didn't, of I didn't vote either because I thought it would be unfair. I'm the one who comes up with these anyway. So were, these are only Josh's votes? They're only well, no, Josh's your votes. score no, counted. No, no, no. All, it was... Your oh. second and third votes were still counted. And my first, second, and third. So yes, I did have a much larger what say. What the hell? Because you threw your votes away. You threw your votes no. away by voting for yourself. You shouldn't be able you to vote for yourself. I, 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 okay, so look, if Flera is going to vote for MVP, uh, is it not going to be like, oh, well, you know, I think I was the best player of the fucking year, so I'm going <laughs> to vote for myself. I, I, no? I, don't... I, will say, I will say there is no chance that either of you two would have won because no one else voted for you two. You would have been... Matt, second why didn't you vote for me? I didn't even know you got it. Yeah, what? anyway, uh, uh, listen, listen, gents, settle down. I know it's a prestigious award, but the winner of the best Bren's Player of the Week of the Year award goes to Zoe. Huh. Boom. Way. Let's go. Zoe uh, wins it all. Uh, Josh, what yeah. was your justification? I don't think I had, I did not have Zoe in first place. In fact, oh. I believe this was, Zoe was second place for all of us. And so therefore yeah. won. What there was you your first place? My first place was Achilles taking out Fielder because I thought that was just oh. such a, a lovely moment when Achilles went and took out Fielder when he wasn't able to be with the rest of his team. But obviously, I mean, Zoe got fucking married. Of course, she's going to be at the top True. of everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. You, you can't really, you can't really she, argue. No, I mean, you, can, you can't argue with it. Like, it was a lovely moment. Uh, and it was in the middle of COVID as well, so it's like a, a a task for her anyway. She's currently, I say, stuck. She's currently in Switzerland, caring yeah. after her father, who is ill at the moment as well. And even though she looks like she's having a lovely time on Instagram, roaming around Switzerland, it is still a really traumatic time for her, I'm sure, because yeah, her family's it's... going through like a really uh, horrific moment, and she, she's got to be there for them. Best yeah, very to tough Zoe. year. So best I think a, a well-deserved winner of best Absolutely. player of the week of yeah. the year award. I couldn't agree more. I'm I'm very glad yeah. that uh, that Zoe ends up being the winner of the best player of the week of the year uh, award in general as well. What I did hope... I win the player of the week for? I what did I do? Um, did, you, did you win? I it? did. It was like it was no. like super recent. What? You, I can't no, remember I why, but I gave it to you for good reason. That's all you really yeah, need to know. I forgot what it was. You don't need to know the actual justification. So am I saying? So am I the only person on the show that hasn't won a Bren's Player of the Week? Oh my God, you are. Well, here's the thing, Josh. Bren's given it to himself, and he's given it apparently, even though I don't remember it, to Matt and Reinforce. Uh -huh. and I, so uh, me and Kurt have just been left out to dry. Well, Josh, Kurt, Kurt, I, I will say. You get a, a player of the week. Hold on, I will say that there is still one more he's week. He's smiling. Oh, Kurt is this week. Kurt is they, this week. This, this he's week. Smiling. I this know week. it. <laughs> <laughs> and so week. it's time. But a Bren's Player of the Week presented by T-Mobile. Roll the tape, Kurt. That's Player of the Week. <sighs> presented by T-Mobile. And my Player of the Week this week goes to... The Elevator on Hollywood. No! For changing... Oh, Kurt! This should have been Kurt! What? It was no! Kurt! 
You know it what? goes to the elevators on Hollywood on the PTR for changing and now good. not being RNG based. I'm not mad about this. At least now me and Kurt can both wallow in sadness, having been forgotten Kurt. about Brent. <laughs> no, it's just been Kurt. This is such a good player of the week. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's I, an elevator. I, it's an object. I don't know what, do you, you genuinely feel quite down that you haven't won, Josh? I didn't even realize that I hadn't won. I didn't uh, think it was a thing to even be upset about. Yeah, but I if Matt and Johnny really have won, now I, I feel upset one. about it. Uh, it is a prestigious award. It's the most uh, prestigious uh, award that Platinum uh, can give out. Because it's presented by T-Mobile. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is it is why, a prestigious award. But there's didn't still... Josh in my Dream Daddy game win uh, <laughs> there, player There's, of the there's week. many more weeks to come. And it, it, it goes to the most deserving of the week, with the exception of when Jaws gave out the award. But, you know, we, we'll forget about that one. The the, the point is, it, it, you know, there's many more weeks to come. When you deserve it, you deserve it. But that you would feel bad, right, if you got the award, but you didn't deserve it. Yeah, I it would. would. I need to win something meaningful. Yeah, so so I clearly sure. need to just try harder in my life, achieve more. Yeah, desperately just scrub well, out some you, small uh, amount of appreciation from you, Brent. You, you stopped streaming so you can eat thirty cans of Pringles wavy every day. Maybe you <laughs> started. Doesn't like... this deserve a player of the week? No, look, no. look at that incredible no. Pringles. Not really, a trip you to should, the doctor. You should definitely wow. send it into Pringles though. I think yeah. I should, yeah. If there's an earthquake, I'm going to crap myself in the middle of the night. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, a lot of al- that's a lot of aluminium falling on the floor. Yeah, yeah, it is. Actually. Why did you give it to the elevators on Hollywood? Why not giving it... Why didn't you give it to a oh. developer that made the changes? I, I want it because of my prediction. What prediction? The one where I said uh, Fleddle was going to win the oh, MVP. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, in Shanghai, yeah. And that Doha wasn't going to be in the Overwatch League. That's yeah. pretty yeah, worthy, actually. Yeah. Now, did Matt, what did Reinforce win it for, then? You are a very know. forgettable I, Matt. I, so. he, was, he, was, he was super upset or something. And no, I there was, that there was yeah. something about uh, either it was like a hosting or like I did something. Oh, like yes, it was the hosting. Yeah, you, took over, yeah. you took over hosting for the day on short notice, and I, I thought oh. you did a good job. I really have achieved nothing. I mean, you, 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 you do achieve a lot, Josh. I just feel like you're secure <sighs> enough in your own achievements oh. that you don't need an award most of the time. I mean, I most of your achievements this, this past year has been like shaving your hair or like doing <laughs> negative things. <laughs> Why, didn't you, uh, like... true. True. Why didn't you give it to Eyebrows. Josh uh, for setting up an AdSense account so we can actually get Kurt money oh, via oh, the oh, ad? True. So, so, no. no. Sideshow. What? I, there must have been a valid reason as to why I didn't give it to you that week. You probably just had some fucking links around Gibraltar meme that you <laughs> No, <laughs> no. If you can find the exact week and the exact episode. Rugby team. Actually, yeah, can, some, some somebody in the comments team. can probably go back and track it. What was When that week happened, what was it? I mean, I don't know. It doesn't even matter that much, you know? I think, uh, yeah, the Blends, the Blends Predator of the Week Award is really shaping up to be something that could just be a staple of the Overwatch scene for years to come. I'm quite True, excited to see it progress from, at the beginning, quite humble, you know, quite a humble start, mainly only going to players. And now we're giving it to, uh, you know, just... Abstract concepts. Yeah, concepts. Yeah. <laughs> Elevators. <laughs> Elevators. Why, now, your question was, why did I give it to the elevator and not the developer who made that change? Yeah. Well, <laughs> do you know who made it? Well, the thing is... Jeff Kaplan did it. I don't no, know who it was who did. I don't know who it was who made this change, but it was a very good one, and I'll I'll commend you for that. Um, but I will say as well. Um, no, I've got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> no justification. It's a good selection, well, though. Good selection. I, th- I yeah, think it's I mean, quite I'm, interesting I'm quite as pleased well. with this award. Now, Matt, you say I don't really achieve much for this show, but I feel like this award has has brought a lot of of of. When did when did I say that? You bully me on a regular basis. That's true. not true. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, behind the scenes, you, you worthless piece of shit is some of the things you said yeah. to me. No, I, no, no actually, like, I, I think this should be the next award of the show. What? 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 I don't have a name for it, but just talking about it, we should make a no. Never mind. I don't know where I'm going with what? this. This is content. This is good content. What, the worthless the piece of shit. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? This oh, is like Johnny's this is like the, no, this is like the Love Island drama you were talking about earlier. You know, you need know, to say some dumb shit. So here we are, plat chat, and we're having no, you haven't, we're talking you haven't about even, bullying each other and like you haven't it, even said great. anything. You just this you're is, just kind of 
You're just Johnny, you, you, you and words? Bren are having a conversation about bullying. This is great content. What? People what? love this shit. They digest it up on Reddit. Like this, get the word out. I think, Johnny needs, you. Yeah. I think Johnny needed to pee so badly his bladder filled up and they started exchanging like cerebral fluid for <laughs> yeah. pee. Yeah, I'm at that point. It's like, like, it's, like, it's, uh, it's coming out of my nose pretty it's soon. It's like Johnny, like, go. Johnny's brain dis disintegrated and he just started, it's good he just started content. putting, oh, putting it's words good together. Content. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a sentence. It was content. just like, yeah, the, hey, uh, yeah, content. <laughs> uh, 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 I was uh, thinking I, on the spot. With piss right. in my bladder, it's hard. <clears throat> hard I mean, oh people love God. that shit. Okay, leave a comment down below if you like the content. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been the <laughs> Platinum <laughs> One Show. <laughs> What's wrong, Josh? What I have seen. I mean, those are so short. <laughs> T-Mobile, please pay us. I please can pay see us. everything. No, you can't. I mean, Don't I can nearly us. see everything. You can't see everything. I've made sure. It's Don't the worry. white as well. What?